the oral division presents Mathematics Enhancement Program Has five areas of concern Teachers' proficiency in math content Pedagogy and other innovative teaching strategies Increase quality learning resources in mathematics Improving assessment in math or IA Strengthen capacity of out-of-field teachers in math and let us enjoy mathematics. Ang awi ng Pilipinas. Paminog ka sumanaman mig tukul to langit Woy mig tumpi to tanok Kasublan maroson no konog kailingan Kamig palin tutuan noy No sub-sub to kanamin gaynawa Woy mig punan to kanamin umul to molo na anon na No mig pogpono sa init ampaw to ingod Sa ini kay kunto manaman amoy no ritipul san to langit Og sampit to maroson nun ngaran na Dumat to kay kon mo panisingan na Kakalayag tahun liyag Karang, panayangan, pamulingan, mandalingan, woy, tomo, dumapad, sublapad, erit, harikal, namig bahayan nuto, katongoda, tapog nongnong, tapog pataha, oyog patanod, danod, kanami, tematolos nun tularo, no nakawaglit, get ampot, kawihana, oyog kasolom, duok opianan, woy, katubungan, magbabayo, sa ini ka ko din tugtubaro na, igbohay kuro, di ko'y kawa, ka magbabayon mamin. Toran manama no olog no gdayrayan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم اجمع شمل الأمات والنصارى والمسلمين في الفلبين وصلت مجتمعنا هذا بالسلم والأمن والتقدم في وطننا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء والزلازل وسيء الأسقام وما ظهر منها وما بطن خاصة كوبيد 19 المنتشرة في العالم يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أداب النار وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين يا رب العالمين Almighty Father, Creator of heaven and earth, we adore and worship your holy name, our healer, baptizer, savior, and coming king. We stand in awe to your every creation in land, seas, and air. We humble ourselves, asking for forgiveness for our trespasses. Purify us, cleanse us, 
make us worthy to call upon you. We thank you, God, for the salvation you freely gave through Jesus. Today, we call unto you to bless us and be a blessing to others. Empower our leaders, our teachers, give courage to the parents and inspiration to the young ones. May we always celebrate life and love. May we always acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow charity. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, the truth. Where there is doubt, the faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we received, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Aspiration, the top-notch region in developing and nurturing 21st century learners through inclusive education. Quality policy, we are committed to serve our learners, teachers, school heads and stakeholders by providing contextualized learning materials, competent school heads and education supervisors, relevant regulatory services and local policies, and responsive education support services. These are delivered by responsible, competent, and innovative employees supported by technologically driven processes and keeping an environment of continual improvement. We are also committed to comply with the existing laws, 
rules and regulations issued by Civil Service Commission and other oversight agencies and to operate under an enabling accountability, God-fearing leadership with ethical and transparent governance. Core Values Empowerment Adaptability Goal-Oriented Leadership and Excellence Motivated and inspired to equip teachers with the skills they need to develop high quality learning outcomes assessments and ensure that schools do receive high quality technical assistance on assessment and grading practices that will most effectively learn, support learner development and respond to changing circumstances. That is why we are all virtually present in this conduct of the division mass training on the development of teams like performance-based and process skills test webinar. Gold morning, Davao de Oro. I am teacher Bessie Aya N. Banyas of Lagab Elementary School, Compostela West District. Good morning, Teacher Bessie. Gold morning, Division of Davao de Oro. I am Teacher Joseph Z. Rizon from Pantuca National High School. We are grateful and privileged to be with you in this three-day Division Mass Training on the development of teams like Performance-Based and Process Skills Test webinar beginning today. June 30 to July 2, 2021. Hi, Teacher Bessie. Hi, Teacher Joseph. Um, did you know that this three-day training is simultaneously streamed through our various platforms, which can be accessed through the different viewers link provided to us by our um, district math coordinators in our respective group chats. We may be viewed through our Facebook page, Davo de Oro Math Circle of Innovators, our Facebook private group, the DDO Mathematics Hub for Active Learning, and through our YouTube channel at DDO MEP TV. And don't forget to subscribe. Yes, Teacher Bessie, and for the information of everyone, our attendance links are found below. Um, we have our attendance, of course, that would be our attendance for today. That is um, tiny dot cc slash day one um, um, dash am. So don't forget to um, link uh, to click the link for our attendance today. And of course, we encourage everyone, our dear teacher participants, to please take a pre test again. Pre-test po through our pre-test link shown on your screen. That is uh, tinyurl.com slash pre-test DDO assessment. Yes, and we would like to inform everyone that our official hashtag for this training shall be hashtag DDO MEP 2021. Again, that is hashtag DDO MEP 2021. You may post your pictures, screenshots, and or your daily outputs while being virtually present in our training. Again, our official hashtag is hashtag DDO MEP 2021. Yes, and that is a very accurate teacher, Bessie. So we are happy to have you all um, virtually present in your various gadgets, ready to learn and improve one way or another. 
end on that note to formally give his welcome address let us have on screen a master teacher one of monte vista national high school and at the same time the president of the davao de oro math circle of innovators sir jeremias c gumanoy Let's give him a virtual round of applause. Hello, Teacher Jerry. Hello, Davao de Oro. According to Miguel E. Ruiz, respect is one of the greatest expression of love. So my greatest expression of love to our Almighty God Father, my respect and salute to our Regional Director of Davao Region, Dr. Alan Barnazo, to our Regional Supervisor in Math and Science, Dr. Maria Lisa I. Birandoy, the brilliant people of SDO Davao de Oro, headed by Schools Division Superintendent, Ma'am Euphemia T. Gamutin, with her Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Romel Handayan. My respect and salute also to the people of Administrative Section, headed by Engineer Norberto S. Manlangit. Also, the people of SGO Division, headed by SGOD Chief Dr. Ruben J. Riponte. To the wonderful people of CID Office, headed by our Chief Dr. Arlene B. Lim. To all Education Program Supervisors of different learning areas, especially to our very own Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics, the dazzling leader of our specialization, the brain of this event, Dr. Renato N. Pakpakin, to the school public, uh, public district supervisors and district coordinating principals of our 18 districts of Dabo de Oro, the school principals, school heads, both from elementary and secondary, especially to our school principal of Monte Vista National High School, Dr. Gernaldine O. Perez, the officers of Mathematics Circle Innovators, TWG of this event. And finally, the star of this event, our dearest participants, the mathematics teachers of Dabo de Oro, both from elementary and secondary. To all of you who are watching and listening out there, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My warmest welcome to this event, the division mass training on the development of TIMSS-like assessment, performance-based assessment and process of skill test webinar. With this event, we hope it will give everyone a new day of learning, turning another page of your endeavor for this new chapter of modality of capacitating our teachers focusing on teachers' quality, hoping that as you travel the line with this event, may joy and happiness, passion and dedication crosses along your way. This webinar also hope to create a parabola of a well-equipped mathematics teachers facing upward, ready to conquer the challenges in delivering the quality education to our learners. So without much ado, Welcome everyone and good morning. Mabuhay ang mga teachers sa Davao de Oro. God bless us all. Thank you so much, Sir Jerry. Ayan, thank you so much, Sir Jerry for that very warm welcome to begin this three-day training. Indeed, Teacher Joseph. Yeah. Yes, Teacher Bessie, thank you so much, Serge Gumanoy, for your warm welcome. Our DDOMCI president, Mambesi. Now, let us have 
um, another member of the Davao de Oro Math Enhancement Program Technical Working Group. We have Miss Irene Lea C. Mangohon, a teacher three from Pantuca National High School for the introduction of participants and the training management. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Good morning. My respect and salute to the leadership of the DepEd officials in Davao de Oro Division, headed, of course, by the Brilliant Schools Division Superintendent, Ma'am Euphemia T. Gamutin, CESO 5, supported by the hardworking and equally brilliant Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Rumel R. Handayan, the school's governance and operations chief, Dr. Ruben J. Riponte, the OIC Chief of the Curriculum Implementation Division, Dr. Arlene B. Liam, the vigorous education program supervisors in Filipino and Technology and Livelihood Education, Dr. L. Decrees B. Calzadora and Ma'am Noemi P. Canales, the multi-talented Dr. Dexter E. Siquina, education program supervisor in MAPE, and the charming and witty EPS in science, Ma'am Cecilia C. Morales. The equally beautiful and best body supervisors in English and edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, Dr. Hilda A. Peña and Ma'am Nohara O. Pinuti. The gorgeous and fashionistas, Dr. Andy P. Cabudo, Education Program Supervisor in Special Education, and Dr. Grace D. Potilias, Education Program Supervisor in Araling Panlipunan. The last but not the least is the man behind today's first ever virtual training in mathematics. The dynamic and a man with substance, the education program supervisor in mathematics, Dr. Renato N. Pakpaki. The DDO Mathematics Enhancements Program Technical Working Group. This three-day mass training of teachers and the teams like performance-based and process skills test is not possible without the help and support of the technical working group who made this happen, recognizing their efforts and untiring support that they will deserve. Starting with the Mathematics Enhancements Program Technical Working Group, headed by Dr. Renato N. Pakpakin. The Mathematics Enhances Program focuses on five areas. The TWGs are divided into five. There are two members of the technical working group assigned to be focal persons or trainers for each area. First, first is on boosting teachers' proficiency in math content. We have teachers from Pantuca National High School Ma'am Sylvia Arkiram and Ma'am Irene Lea C. Mangohon, a master teacher and a teacher three, respectively. Second is on reskilling and upskilling teachers on pedagogy and other innovative teaching strategies. The master teachers from Pasian and Mabini National High School, Ma'am Christine A. Teves and Ms. Febo P. Pumikpit. The third is on increasing quality resources in mathematics. The master teachers from Moncayo Central Elementary School and Montevista National High School, Sir Mesito B. Montesilio and Sir Jeremias P. Gumanoy. Fourth is on improving assessment in mathematics or IAIM. We have teachers from Attorney Orlando S. Romando National High School, the Dandan Copwal, Ma'am Shella May and Sir Michael Eric. The last but not the least is on strengthening the capacity of out of field teachers in math or the scout math. We have Ma'am Rubilin A. Maharukon, a teacher one from Maragusa National High School, and Ma'am Jeline B. Sabi, a teacher three from San Miguel National High School. We also have from the Quality Assurance Monitoring and Evaluation a senior education specialist from the School's Governance and Operations Division, Ma'am Marnelle Jane A. Bernal. The members of the training hosts who fearlessly accepted the challenge, we have teachers Bessie Aya, 
Anne Banias from Lagab Elementary School, Sir Jeremy Avior from Cabijanan National High School, and Sir Joseph J. Reason from Pantukan National High School. We also have the members of the DDO Math Innovators ICT team, headed of course by Ma'am Shella May Dandan. Here are Sir Michael Eric Dandan, Sir Mac Austin P. Alesna, Sir Julius Ernest Miranda, and Sir Rimuel M. Bisnar. These are the people who put much, uh, put much effort and work tirelessly for the realization of this training. Kudos team. I am also delighted to introduce the participants who pre-registered to this three-day division mass training of teachers on the development of teams like performance-based and process skills. In alphabetical order, starting with Compostela East District. Compostela East District is headed by their active public schools district supervisor, Sir Ray P. Antonio, together with the district math coordinators from both elementary and secondary schools, Ma'am Marieta A. Rimulta and Ma'am Dahlia A. Campos. Compostela East District has 140 registrants as of 1.11 p.m. yesterday, June 29. Compostela West District. Compostela West District is headed by their vibrant, their vibrant district coordinating principal, Dr. Maruja V. Belisario, together with the district math coordinators, Ma'am Chupila L. Bungat in elementary and Ma'am Julian B. Sabri in secondary. There are 113 registered teachers in this training for Compostela West District. Laak North District. Laak North District is headed by Dr. Ramon L. Zapra, the Energetic Public Schools District Supervisor, together with the district coordinators, Joven A. Carmelotes and Dennis Zaragoza. Laak North has 58 registered participants. Laak South. Laak South District has 122 registered participants. They are headed by their competent district coordinating principal, Ruel E. Vailan, together with the district math coordinators, Marisa B. Digito and Bernardina A. Dana. Mabini District. Mabini District is headed by the vigorous public schools district supervisor, Renee J. Pernaroyo, together <laughs> With her are the district math coordinators from elementary and secondary schools in the district, Mom Maribet C. Relator and Ms. Pebble P. Pumikpi. There are 100 registered participants in Mabini District. For Mako North District, there are 165 registered participants and they are headed by their smart public schools district supervisor, Noel B. Canales, together with the district math coordinators, Ma'am Teresa P. Cantilia and Ma'am Lorna B. Gapo. For Mako South, Mako South District is headed by the beautiful Dr. Jody P. Noses, a public schools district supervisor. Together with her are the district math coordinators, Mom Mary Ann P. Mendoza and Mom Generals V. Aliaga. There are 23 registered participants for Mapo South District. Maragusan East. Maragusan East District is headed by the well rounded Sir Mar Ulysses G. Sombrero, the district coordinating principal. Together with Sir Mar are the district math coordinators of Maragusan East, Sir Gerson Ibanez and Mom Annalyn Fuentes. Maragusan East has 74 registered participants. Maragusan West District is headed by the clever district coordinating principal, Ma'am Emilia A. Zamora. Maragusan West has 15 registered participants. Ma'am Ruena A. Puertos and Ma'am Imelda Melendres are the district mark coordinators of the Maragusan West. The Mawab District. The Moab District is headed by their sharp-witted public schools district supervisor, Dr. Azucena L. Tevez. Together with her, in her frame are Sir Jefferson R. Grasparil and Ma Miriam R. Andrade, the district math coordinators. This district has 114 
registered participants. Moncayo is. Moncayo is district is headed by the charming district coordinating principal, Mom Shirley G and V Sugano, and together with her are the district math coordinators, Mom Renly T Ardina and Mom Christine A Tevis. Moncayo East has 107 registered participants. Next in line is the Mukayo West District. Mukayo West District has 67 registered participants. This district is headed by the Singing Public Schools District Supervisor, Dr. Marcelino G. De Los Reyes. Together with him are the District Math Coordinators, Sir Hemisito P. Montesilio and Mom L.V. J. Caballero. Montevista District. Monte Vista District is headed by the Exceptional Public Schools District Supervisor, Mom Clemencia P. Scrupulo, who has 66 registered participants for this training. The District Math Coordinators for Monte Vista District are Mom Gina Pere Moreras and Sir Jeremiah C. Gumanoy. Nabunturan East District. Nabunturan East District has 70 registered participants. The Buntaran East District is headed by their Keen District Coordinating Principal, Mom Rosario A. Nuneza. Mom Ferrolin C. Lapiceros and Sir Angelo Gutierrez Jr. are the District Math Coordinators of the Buntaran East District. The Buntaran West District. The Buntaran West District is headed by the sagacious Dr. Alan R. Guerta, who, is 90, who has 98 registered participants for this training. The district math coordinators for Nabunturan West District are Mom Ludilia P. Alesna and Sir Dave A. Remarata. New Bataan District. New Bataan District has 210 participants that constitutes 11.4% of the total number of registered participants. They get the most number of participants so far. This district is headed by their considerate district coordinating principal, Dr. Yumeda C. Kaliktan, and with him are Mom LGP Mas Mayor and Ms. Shana May Di Pantinople, the District Math Coordinators. Pantuca North District. Pantuca North District is headed by the sharp witted and transparent public schools district supervisor, Dr. Florlinda G. Dinopol. Pantuca North has 206 registered participants. The District Math Coordinators of Pantuca North are Mom Faith Caroline I. Domingo and Mom Sylvia R. Kiram. The last but not the least is the Pantucan South District. The newly created district has 86 registered participants. Pantucan South District is headed by the Compassionate and Motherly District Coordinating Principal, Mom Balbina B. Tolentino. The District Math Coordinators of Pantucan South are Chafel B. Nunez and Mom Cherry May Dinkum. There are 18 districts who actively participated in the pre-registration of this activity that accumulated a total number of 1,834 registered participants as of 11, 11 p.m. of June 29, 2021. Thank you, Sir Joseph Mambesi. Thank you so much, Miss Irene. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And indeed, we are blessed to have these people from our supportive division office personnel down to our school coordinators and math teachers who are willing to learn and be equipped with the new knowledge and skills. Right, Teacher Bessie? That's right, Teacher Seth. And also... We are fortunate to have our resource speakers, our ICT team, and the rest of the training management team through the leadership of our education program supervisor in mathematics, Dr. Renato N. Pakpakin, who have tirelessly planned and is making this training possible. And speaking of our supportive and active division office personnel let us hear a message from the oic chief of the curriculum and instruction division the brilliant dr arlene b Lim. hello good morning everybody 
Uh, of course, my courtesy to our regional director, Alan Farnazo, and our CLMD chief, Dr. Jean Aldiquiro. And of course, our pillars of the schools division of Davao de Oro, schools division superintendent, Ma'am Euphemia Gamutin, and Sir Romel Handayan, our ASDS. Of course, uh, my courtesy as well to our Regional Science and Mathematics Education Program Supervisor, Dr. Maria Liza Birandoy. And also to the man behind this training, Dr. Renato Pakpaking. To the event speakers of this three-day training on the development of teams like performance-based and process skills test. To the participants of this evening, good morning everyone. While we are facing many challenges in this new normal, there are situations where our performance are limited because of the restrictions set to us. And that instead of facing each other to discuss matters to develop our learners and to develop ourselves as well, uh, we are restricted and we are forced to meet virtually to make things happen well anyway that's uh, only part of our challenges and we can make it i know all of us are missing each other but i am positive that uh, this too will pass with the help of our lord almighty of course everyone is supposed to pray for this laban lang po tayo mga kaguro I am very much grateful to Dr. Renato Pakpakin, our Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics in our Schools Division of Davao de Oro, for initiating this kind of training. Because I believe that the session stated in your matrix of activities will give you insights and clarifications of the key competencies and characteristics to be an effective mathematics teacher. Expect series of training in mathematics with our new EPS who is truly inspired like you. Good luck to all participants. Your learning for this three-day webinar depends on how much attention you will be giving. So please focus and concentrate. So I would like also to thank all the district heads for uh, the dissemination of this memorandum. Uh, and I am very happy of the positive response of all the mathematics teachers. But I am also encouraged to follow up no, yung mga districts na parang konti lang yata ang nag-register. So I hope you can help me with this. The PWG can also follow up. Uh, pwede pa namang humabol sa ating training. So again, be inspired and be an instrument of peace and of course, be an instrument of learning and do this because we are in mission to teach these learners. We do this because not to impress but of course to serve our Lord. Thank you everyone and good luck. And see you on Friday for your closing. Good morning. Thank you very much, Dr. Arlene. Indeed, our performance has been really limited. And we are challenged to meet virtually in all our endeavors since the pandemic has started. However, just like what Mom Arlene said, we shall use our learning and we will really try to focus and give justice to the goal of this training. Right, Teacher Joseph? Yes, Teacher Bessie, sabi nga ni Ma'am, laban lang tayo mga kaguro for this in this time of pandemic. So, without further ado, Teacher Bessie, we are not only supported by our very own division personnel, but the support that we have in this training is all the way from our region office. Yes, that is true, Teacher Joseph. And ladies and gentlemen, we welcome on screen our regional 
Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics and Science, Dr. Margalisa Berandoy. I A virtual round of applause, please. My respect to our regional director, Dr. Alan G. Parnazo, our assistant regional director, Dr. Maria Ines C. Asuncion, our SDS, Yuprinia P. Gamuten of Davao de Oro Division, ESDS, Dr. Romel Imhandayan, our CELMD Chief, Dr. Mary Jean B. Eldiger, our SDOD Chief of Davao de Oro Division, Dr. Robin G. Riponte, our CID Chief, Dr. Arlene B. Lin, Supervisors, Principals, Facilitators, Participants, and of course, the one who invited me, the Education Program Supervisors in charge, the Education Program Supervisor in charge of Mathematics, Dr. Renato Pakpakin. Good morning. It is the vision of the entire Department of Education to produce graduates who reach their full potential. Graduates who will help develop our country into becoming a first world nation. This is a great challenge for us educators, how to uplift the implementation of the basic education in the Philippines. To be more specific within Region 11 and Davao de Oro. There are so many things that we have to consistently monitor evaluate, review, and adjust to keep up with ever-changing nature of our learners. Needless to say, education must be adaptive on the needs and abilities of the students in the present times. This is the reason why we had to do an upkeep on our curriculum standards, provide trainings to our teachers, review the proficiency level, monitor the teaching learning process and others. I am very much happy that Davao de Oro Division provides this training in developing teams like assessments. Assessments is one of the three basic pillars in the teaching learning process. Assessments play a critical role in the educational system because we can never say that a strategy or an intervention is very effective unless data is analyzed. This data should come from a credible assessment tool and process. You might have heard about content validity and reliability in assessments. These are factors that must be present in all assessment modes to create an accurate picture of what is being assessed. The, there are issues, however, when it comes to content validity and reliability. Oftentimes, educators overlook these components. Others make irrelevant assessments which spoil best practices. Nevertheless, this initiative of Davao de Oro is very timely. I do hope the success of this event. In these trying times, Assessment is always important, not just in the education sector, but in health as well. For if we do sound assessment, we make sound judgments, and we make good choices in our life. Stay safe, everyone. God bless us all, and mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you, Dr. Birandoy. Your support in our endeavor is very much appreciated. It's your bestie. And yes. Thank you also, Doc, for in the enlightenment that education is really adaptive and we have to do and to upkeep our curriculum standards. That is why we are accepting here in Davao de Oro this challenge to embrace the importance of assessments and in making our graduates to be globally equipped. Yes, right, Teacher Bessie. And without further ado, Teacher Bess, um, did you know that our three-day training today 
is just the beginning of the series of training we are to have in the weeks and months to come. And these are part of the DDO MEP or the Davao de Oro Math Enhancement Program. Yes, Teacher Seth. As we all have seen in our infographics, the DDO MEP or the Math Enhancement Program has its five areas of concern and those are number one, boost teachers' proficiency and math content. Number two, reskill and upscale teachers on pedagogy and other innovative teaching strategies. Teacher Joseph. And of course, number three, increased quality learning resources in mathematics. Number four, improving assessment in math or I aim. Or, uh, and number five, strengthen the capacity of out-of-field teachers in math or the scout math. Yes, we have named it all, all right. And obviously, our area of focus for our training shall be on IAIM or improving assessment in mathematics. Are we all excited? Yes, of course, we all are. And to give our training rationale, let us welcome on screen our very own Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics, the wonderful Sir Renato and Pakpakin, Doctor of Education. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, my respect to our regional director, Dr. Alan G. Farnazo our CLMD Chief, uh, Dr. Mary Jane Aldiguer, my friend, uh, Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics and Science of the Regional Office, Dr. Um, Maria Liza Birandoy. Uh, also to the pillars, the strong pillars of Davao de Oro Division, uh, our school's division superintendent, uh, Ma'am Euphemia T. Gamutin, CISO 5, by the way, Mom Euphemia cannot attend our activity today because she is attending an equally important activity uh, of the IETF. So she's attending now an IETF meeting. Uh, also to our <coughs> school uh, SGOD, no? SGOD chief, Dr. Ruben J. Riponte, uh, my mentor, and our uh, active, very active no? and, and very supportive uh, chief of the Curriculum Implementation Division, Dr. Arlene Lim. Uh, my, my fellow education program supervisors of the Division of Davao de Oro, the Public Schools District Supervisors, the District Mathematics Coordinators, especially also to the participants of this training. <clears throat> my part now is to give the, the rationale of this training. So the COVID-19 pandemic is one of the greatest threats in education and has created the largest disruption of education systems in history as it poses challenges to various sectors, especially in responding basic rights. With the community quarantine and the practice of social and physical distancing being among the measures to contain COVID-19, basic education is among the sectors heavily affected as schools and community learning centers are not allowed for physical or face-to-face -face conduct of classes. So the Department of Education, in its commitment uh, to ensure uh, that teaching and learning will continue, has always maintained that education must continue where whatever the challenges, changes, and even dangers we confront now and in the future. That is why Davao de Oro Division focuses on, on teacher quality, so we come up with this mathematics uh, enhancement program. We focus on the five areas. Number one, uh, the, we are planning to boost teachers' proficiency in mathematics. So there are a lot of series of trainings, uh, especially on critical contents, the least mastered competencies of our learners, and the topics difficult to teach by our teachers. Second, we wanted to reskill and upskill teachers on pedagogy and other innovative teaching strategies. It is important that our teachers um, will be having the list, no? the list of innovative teaching strategies 
for use in their teaching. Number three is to increase quality learning resources in mathematics. So that is why we are uh, continuing to develop learning resources, supplementary learning resources in mathematics, so that uh, our learners will be given quality learning resources. Next is improve assessment in mathematics. So we call this actually as Project I am, I aim, no? that is improving assessment in, in mathematics. So this training today, all about teams like uh, performance-based skill assessment, is under improving assessment in math. Number five, we also uh, focus on strengthening. No? We wanted to strengthen the capacity of our out-of-field teachers in mathematics because I believe there are math teachers uh, teachers who are teaching mathematics but are non-major of the subject. That is why we, we plan, we, we conceptualize a training that will capacitate all those out-of-field teachers. Pursuant to the thrust of the Department of Education to promote quality education and ensure learning continuity despite of some adjustments made and in support to the aim of mathematics curriculum, to develop critical and problem-solving skills. The mathematics area of the Division of Davao de Oro I, will conduct no, this virtual series of trainings for workshops and workshops to be participated by all interested mathematics teachers of the division. So this is in support to the division basic education learning continuity plan and to provide guidance and in the provision of quality assessment of learning and on grade the grading scheme in the new normal as our response no, to the challenges of the delivery of basic education. So this training workshop on the development of contextualized assessments, teams like performance-based and process skills test aims to capacitate our teachers to develop quality assured learning outcomes assessment or learning resources and ensure that schools are provided with quality technical assistance on assessment and grading practices that will most meaningfully support learner development and respond to varied context at this time. So a fundamental measure of the success of any curriculum implementation is the quality of student learning and knowing the extent to which students have achieved outcomes specified in the curriculum is fundamental to both improving teaching and evaluating the curriculum implementation. In order to accomplish quality outcomes, quality assessments shall be developed. So we do this training virtually as we adhere to one of the principles of the basic learning continuity plan, and that is to protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel, and prevent further transmission of COVID-19 using appropriate applications suitable for this training. So it is believed that with a series of trainings and workshops on the development of contextualized assessments, teams like performance-based and process skills assessment, the establishment, you know, the establishment of the division test database, because that's our, our target, will come into fruition and the quality of assessment programs for learning outcomes will be meaningful and substantial. So before I will end my, my giving of rationale to this training, uh, I wanted everyone to participate in giving their expectations, no? giving us, uh, give, uh, you, you will give me your expectations through open uh, through looking into the the the, the slide, Mam Shela. Okay, so in the slide, you will be um, opening Mentimeter. Okay, so you are to write one best word that describes your expectations on this training. So what you are going to do is to um, to open Mentimeter. No, men ah, but, okay. Uh, because we are running short of time, I'll be giving the, the expectations after the, the coming. Okay, again, thank you and good morning. Thank you so much, Dr. Pakpakin, for your enlightenment and our three-day endeavor as math innovators. 
I believe everybody are now ready to do their best in today, tomorrow, and the next day's training. Yes, indeed. We have a series of trainings, but it's your bestie. And of course, as much as all of us are ready to be equipped, we also have to know and understand the essence and of quality assurance, monitoring, and evaluation, or Kwame, as part of any training's success. Yes, I agree, Teacher Joseph. And that is why we welcome on screen our very own senior education program specialist from the School Governance and Operations Division, Ms. Marnelli Jane Abernal, to discuss quality assurance, monitoring, and evaluation. Okay, good morning, everyone. To the program host, good morning sa inyo lahat. And of course, to the EPS in Mathematics, Sir Renato Pakpakin, good morning. So this is the Division Mass Training. Okay, excuse me na, ano po ba? Okay, wait. Well. Yes, um, Ma'am Marnelli Jane are, is, is preparing her PPT. For the meantime, Teacher Bessie, um, yes. we would like to remind all our teacher participants Yes, hello, po. Our, um, this three-day training is simultaneously streamed through our various platforms. Please view us through our um, Facebook page, our Facebook private group, and through our YouTube channel. Please also don't forget to take our pre-test that is being flashed on your screen. Our link is being flashed on your screen from time to time. Our pre-test link is at tinyurl.com slash pre-test DDO assessment. There you go on our screen. And also please notify us with your attendance through our attendance link. Um, which is also seen from time to time. This is to remind our teacher participants that in order to complete this training and to acquire our certificates of participation in attendance, you are to accomplish the attendance, pre-test, expected outputs, and the evaluation. And links of the following shall be provided to you time to time. Welcome back, Teacher Joseph. Yes, and of course, shout out muna tayo, Teacher Bessie. Let's have our, um, sino pa ba yung mga nasa ating mga participants today? Of course, I would like to greet um, the, uh, the, uh, the teachers from Panchuca National High Schools headed by our school principal, uh, Ma'am Emalinda B. Renalan. And of course, we also have here Mom Flora May, uh, good morning po watching from Gabby Elementary School, Compostela West District. Hello, hello. We also have Compostela West District from Maparat National High School. That's Maparat National High School. Yes, Maparat. good morning. And, and of course, 
Of course, let's, your school think, teacher, Bessie. Uh, yes, hello to my co-teachers of Lagab Elementary School, headed by our school principal one, Sir Joel R. Akarashon. Good morning, sir. Yan. And Again, I believe... Perfect. Um, okay na ang ating uh, quality assurance and monitoring and evaluation. Let us welcome back our senior education program specialist, Miss Marnelli Jane A. Bernal. Okay, thank you so much, Ma'am Bessie. Sorry for that technical glitches. Here we go. The division mass training on the development of teams like performance-based and process skills test, the Kwatani, from June 30 to July 2 of 2021. So, the rationale of conducting Kwatami or the development of the quality assurance monitoring and evaluation is in accordance to the installation of the Department of Education Quality Management System Aligning to Administrative Order Number 161, the Institutionalizing Quality Management System in Governance, and amended through Executive Order Number 605, or the Institutionalizing the Structure Mechanism and Standards to Implement Quality Management Program. So this issue one says, uh, direct all government agencies to implement and institutionalize a national quality management system as a strategy to promote transparency and accountability in the governance will provide a framework for assessing quality system performance, establish public service quality standards, and of course, recognize quality excellence among government organizations. So for the information of all, this quality uh, assurance monitoring and evaluation, the Kwame or the Kwatame uh, because of the technical assistance is part and parcel of the LND uh, frame of our uh, HR prime in the division office. So this is our computation. We are using the Likert scaling. Strongly disagree is equivalent to one. Disagree is equivalent to two. Agree for three and strongly agree for four. Our minimum standard passing score as stipulated in our ISO standard is 3.5. This is the Kwatami link from day one up to day three. Can you take note of this? I hope the program host will you know, flash this one sa screen po. And the Kwatami indicators are as follows. First, we need to evaluate the session. We will also need to evaluate the facilitators or the speakers. So in the program, there are three speakers for this activity. And the last is we will evaluate the program management and operation. So this is in reference to the virtual training environment being used and the program management team. So I am referring here sa lahat ng TWG that comprise for the success of this training. So that's all for the Kwatame. Hope to see you on the third day of your training for the results. So once again, Good morning and congratulations to the CID team, especially to EPS Pakpakin for having this kind of training. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you very much, Ma'am Marnelli. It is now clear and indeed that uh, Kwatame is to direct all agencies to implement a national quality um, assessment and to promote transparency and accountability of governance. And of course, we are following the Likert scaling. So, yeah, and of course, Teacher Bessie. Yes, and as much as we have known, we have known the roles and in terms of Kwatame, 
Let us now go to the orientation of our training rules. Yes, and of course, we need to be guided on the set of rules we are to follow so that at the end of this training, we all shall be learning a lot and we shall bring all of our learnings in our future tasks. Teacher Bessie? And without further ado, let us welcome on screen one of the DDOMEP, TWG, a Master Teacher 1 of Mabini National High School, Ma'am Pebble P. Pumikpik. Let's give to give our training rules. Ma'am? Good morning to our regional division and district officials who are each introduced and acknowledged a while ago to our division math PWG and to all the math district coordinators and to all the mathematics teachers of Davao de Oro. Good morning. Can you see my PowerPoint? Okay. So again, good morning to all of us and welcome. This is going to be an amazing webinar as long as everyone follows these simple rules. So first, be on time for each virtual session. As a best practice, be just a few minutes early. Second, before the start of each presentation, make sure that you have a stable audio so that you would hear what the speaker is saying. If in case you will be cut off because of poor signal, click again the link provided to you in the group to be able to catch up and return in the webinar. Then don't forget to take down notes during the webinar. Fifth, communicate professionally. Be respectful and courteous at all times. Sixth, if you have a question, Use the chat box for the moderator to note it. Seventh, participate actively by complying with the daily attendance, daily Kwame or evaluation, and submit the required outputs, my dear participants. And lastly, sit back, relax, and enjoy our webinar. Again, thank you and God bless us all. Uh, thank you, Teacher Joseph and Teacher Yes, thank you very much, Ma'am Pebble, for setting us up on how and what to expect, what to do and to not do in this three-day training. And again, we would like to remind everyone and to inform everyone that this is simultaneously th streamed through our platform, which has been sent in the group chats in your messenger and other um, communication um, means that these has been annoying. You can also utilize the comment boxes for your questions, shout outs, and any other form of interaction. Also, our attendance links is found on your screen. Please don't forget to notify us with your attendance. And also, don't forget to take our pre-tests through our pre-tests link, which is also found on your screens. And also, don't forget to accomplish our Kwatame link. Yan, it will be shown on your screen. Our Kwatame link will really 
um, be of help to make this training of a success. And a reminders to our teacher participants that in order to complete this training, um, we are to accomplish our attendance, pre-test, expected um, outputs, and the evaluation and the Kwatami link and which will also be provided for you from time to time. And don't worry, our coordinators, district coordinators will also be forwarding to you those links para hindi na po tayo mahirapan magkopya. Automatic na click ng link, fill up na po tayo and mag-accomplish na po. And I guess we are all set to begin with our training proper are we all ready and let us all be in our comfortable positions and by that i meant comfortable to learn now let us begin our day one training proper which is about the development of teams like assessment our speaker for today is a mathematics teacher for 17 years, six years in a private institution, six years in junior high school, and five years in senior high school. He is also a national champion of Sai Dama teachers category in 2010. He is a Microsoft Education Ambassador, a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, and Microsoft Innovative Education Master Trainer since 2016. He is also one of the hosts and the technical working group member of TV Escuela DepEd Davao de Oro to our uh, math innovators, let us welcome on screen a teacher three from attorney Orlando S. Rimando National High School. Our speaker, Sir Michael Eric L. Dandan. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you, Teacher Bessie. Okay. Hello po. Welcome sa lahat. So let me share my presentation first. Ayan. So, once again, good morning po sa lahat. Good morning everyone. And happy Wednesday po. Today is the last day of our month, June 2021. And what a beautiful way, a beautiful way of ending the month because we started with a training on the development of our student assessment. Okay. So, Welcome po sa ating lahat mga teachers, mga kasamahan nating guru sa iba't ibang panig ng the Division of Davao de Oro. So my respect to our school's division superintendent, Ma'am Yupemia Gamoten, CISO 5, with her very supportive na, na partner, Sir Romel Handayan, our assistant school division superintendent, and our OIC Chief of CID, Dr. Arlene Lim, and of course, our Educational Program Supervisor in Mathematics, Dr. Renato N. Pakpakin. And sa lahat po ng ating mga Educational Program Supervisors ng Division of Dabao de Oro. Yan. So welcome po sa ating lahat. Ano? And welcome na rin po sa ating first topic on our training on assessment, which is the development of teams like assessment but before i start okay before i start with my presentation of the topic allow me first to to introduce our program assessment okay a project on assessment which is under on the mathematics enhancement program of mathematics which is what we call project i aim or what we call improving assessment in mathematics. So, panoorin mo muna natin to, yung teaser ng IAIM. Step at Davo de Oro. Mathematics Enhancement Program presents Project IAIM, Improving Assessment in Mathematics. This is composed of seminars and trainings of teachers for the improvement and development of quality assessment in mathematics for student learning. This also aims to create a division unified assessment for all grade levels 
in preparation for the system assessment either national or international level. Ayan po. So, the main objective po ng ating uh, project I aim is to train teachers no, in developing and implementing a quality assessment on student learning based on the standards and quality of our enhanced basic education curriculum or the K-12. And for this project I aim, our first training po, ito po yung ginagawa natin ngayon. So, this is the first training under the project I aim. So, meaning marami pa po itong mga kasunod na mga training on assessment and maliban po sa assessment, meron po din tayong mga training on the different areas as mentioned by Dr. Renato and Pekpakin kanina. So, kaya po, mga fellow teachers, fellow educators, abang-abang po tayo, ang dami pa pong nakaline up na ating mga virtual seminars. And mag mas maganda po din sana no, pag mawala na itong pandemic para magkakaroon din tayo ng face-to-face -face seminar. So we pray na mawala na itong pandemic na to. And so may I start muna okay, with, with this presentation. Uh, may I ask everyone to, to go to menti.com and use the code 30310029. Again, go to www.menti.com and use the code 30310021. So I will stop sharing Muna because I want to show the Menti result. Ayan. I hope nakikita nyo na po. Okay, so uh, may I request every teachers, yung mga audience natin dyan, go to www.menti.com and use the code. Oh, uh, may changes pala sa code. Ang gagamitin na lang natin na code is 229-44649. Again, go to theminti.com and use the code 229-44649. So, alamin natin ano, kung sino ba yung mga pinakamaraming participant na district dito ngayon. So, what district you came from? Ayan, Mawab. Andiyan na po. Okay, meron din tayo from Nabunturan S. East and then Nabunturan West, Compostela, Mabini. Pero pag malaki po yung, yung nakaname, ibig sabihin mas marami po yung mga nag, nagsipasukan nating mga audience dyan. Okay, sige pa po. Ayan, marami tayong mga audience from the different district. So, parang nagiging pantay-pantay pa muna, no? So, thank you teachers for participating the damianty.com. Ayan, labas pa. We have the Nabunturan West, Pantukan, New Bataan. Okay, so parang distributed talaga yung mga audience natin, no? Uh, yung New Bataan, Pantukan, Mako North, Nabunturan West. Ayan. Sige pa po. So, marami po talaga tayong mga audience ngayon. So, nagpapasalamat po kami sa pagtatangkilik ninyo sa ating uh, virtual training, especially on the project I aim. Okay. Sige po. So, base po sa ating presentation, nakikita ko po na parang mas marami po talaga yung nasa Pantukan North. So, hello-hello po sa ating lahat. And marami din tayo sa Maragusan East District. Okay? And Pantukan North. So, thank you, teachers. Now, at least I know ngayon no, kung saan ba yung ating mga participants Sino ba yung mga pinakamaraming participants within the district? Now, next po. Okay. Ano 
mong mangyari dito. So, ayan, nagkakaroon po tayo ng glitches ano, sa internet connection. Sige po, sige lang po. Uh, we will wait. Uh, next po na ating tatanungin, ano naman kaya no, ang pinakamaraming or sino kaya or anong grade kaya ang may pinakamaraming participants dito ngayon? Okay? So once again, may I request every everyone to go to minty.com and use the code 229-44649. Ayan, meron na po. Grade 2. Grade 6, grade 4, grade 11, grade 4, grade 5. Yan. Senior high school, meron po tayong nakikitang senior high school, meron din grade grade 11 sa senior high school, grade 7, grade 10, grade 3 po sa ngayon ang pinakamarami followed by grade 10. Yan. So, indeed, our our participants are composed of the different grade level. I think lahat yata may grade 5. Okay. So, thank you po ng marami sa inyo. Okay. So, may I go back to my slides? Okay, so pasensya na po, nagkakaroon po tayo ng technical glitches dito. So humihina po yung internet, eh, pero laban lang. Yan talaga pag online, pag virtual. Sige na po. So again, let me share my presentation. Now, sunod po, pag-uusapan naman natin no, yung tungkol sa ating, ano, sa ating topic ngayon. So let us think about this one. What is assessment for you? When do you conduct an assessment? And how do we assess mathematics skills? Now, para mas maging uh, ano po, interactive po yung, yung mga tanong natin, I want you to share or to answer. Uh, meron ba? Eh, hindi yata lumabas yung, ano, yung QR code. So anyway, so... Ano po ba yung assessment no para sa atin? And I know you have your your answers on these questions and then when do you conduct an assessment? Uh, siguro other will answer at the start, at the end kasi marami tayong uh, types ng assessment and then how do you assess mathematics skills? Magkakaroon din tayo ng iba't ibang mga kasagutan dito. Okay, so ngayon, pag-aralan natin kung ano po talaga yung tinatawag na assessment. So what is an assessment? Assessment, it is a process no, that is used to keep track of learners' progress in relation po to learning standards and development of 21st century skill. Uh, this is to promote self-reflection and personal accountability among students about their own learning and to provide basis for the profiling of student performance on the learning competencies and standards of the curriculum. So this is according uh, this is from the department order number 8 series of 2021. Okay. Now According to the DO, Department Order Number 21 series of 2019 which is called the Policy Guidelines of the K-12 Basic education program. Sabi po dito, assessment daw, assessment, no, hindi po daw, assessment is conducted through the classroom-based assessment and the system assessment. So, the classroom-based assessment, ito po yung mga ginagawa natin inside the classroom and the system assessment, ito po yung uh, ginagawang assessment, it could be a national or international. And, When we talk about classroom assessment, okay, 
A classroom assessment is an ongoing process of identifying, gathering, organizing, and interpreting quantitative and qualitative information about learners know and can do. Okay, so there are the, the classroom-based management or assessment is composed of two types of assessment. This is the formative assessment and the summative assessment. Okay, so ano po ba yung tinatawag natin formative assessment? The formative assessment, this refers to the ongoing forms of assessment that are closely linked to the learning process. So it is characterized by informal and intended no and it is intended to help our students identify the strengths and weaknesses in order to learn from the assessment unless this is according to UNIS unisco uh, unisco program of teaching and learning so ibig sabihin po yung formative assessment ito po yung assessment na ginagawa natin within our teaching time and assessment for learning so that teachers can make adjustment in their instruction. Yeah. So also the formative assessment is as an assessment of learning wherein we can reflect no, or the students reflect their own progress. Well, the summative assessment, yung summative assessment naman, ito po yung form of assessment usually occurs towards the end of the period. Okay, ito po yung mga pa-ending na mga assessment of learning in order to describe the standard reached by the learner. Oftentimes, this takes place in order to appropriate decisions about future learning or job suitability uh, to be made. Then judgment derived also from the summative assessment, which can benefit also to the people or other than the learner. And then summative assessment, it measures whether learners have met no, the content and the form uh the performance standards now ngayon meron din po tayong tinatawag na system assessment ano ba itong uh, ano ba itong tinatawag nating system assessment system assessment it measures the effectiveness of our educational system. So, hindi po tinitignan lang yung achievement ng bata, kundi yung kabuuan. So, this is designed to determine the degree to which the system goals are achieved across regions. So, curricular areas and learners. It may also provide evidence and data for monitoring and evaluation. So, this is according to DO number 29 series of 2017. So, system assessment under the K-12 uses both national and international or large-scale assessment. So, alamin natin kung ano ba yung mga system assessment na ginagawa sa atin dito sa DepEd. Now, here are the national assessment. No? So, we have here national assessment or the policy guidelines of the national assessment this uh, we can refer this one to DO number 55 series of 2016 meron po tayong tinatawag na ELNA or the early language literacy and numeracy assessment meron din po tayong tinatawag na EGRA which is the early grade reading assessment meron din po tayong tinatawag na EGMA okay uh, ito po yung early grade mathematics assessment and yung pinaka common po sa lahat the National Achievement Test. I think ELNA, EGRA, and EGMA, uh, dun po natin ito makikita sa elementary level. Okay? So, however, based on the DO number 29 series of 2017, the ELNA and the NAT will be administered to the universal population every three years starting 2018. So, uh, nagkakaroon po ng pagbabago. Dati po, yearly, ngayon naman, uh, every three years na lang po. So, nagkakaroon ng provision ang Department Order Number 55 Series of 2016. Binago siya. And ito na yung Department Order Number 29 Series of 2017. Okay. Yan po ang ating national assessment. Now, how about our international assessment? Meron din po tayong mga sinalihan na international assessment. Okay. Una po, meron tayong tinatawag na Program for International Student Assessment or the PISA. Meron din po tayong tinatawag na which is magiging familiar sa atin ngayon, yung 
Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, which is the TEAMS. And yung sister, ano niya, sister assessment niya, yung PEARLS or the Progress in International Reading Literacy Study. So the PEARLS are conducted in grade 4, pero every 20 years lang po ito. Well, the teams every four years. Malalaman natin yung, yung deep, uh, deepening on teams mamaya-maya po. And lastly, meron din po tayo sa Southeast Asia primary learning metrics. So these are the international assessment and we can found this one on the Department Order number 55 series of 2016. Now, ngayon, bakit mayroon tayong mga assessment? Uh, yan po siguro yung mga naitanong ng mga bata, no? Bakit nagkakaroon ng evaluation? Sabi nga ni John Cowan, assessment okay, is the engine daw which drives the student learning. So it is the engine that drives the student learning. So nagkakaroon po tayo ng mga standards. So itong mga standard na to, aalamin natin why do we need to have the standards on assessment. Una po, to make sure that everyone delivers a quality work. Okay? So, dapat po, lahat po ay nagawa na may quality. And, we want to produce a quality students. Yung mga quality graduates no, na magiging compatible naman sila in global network. We have also to deliver quality programs. And lastly, we have, this is basis on what to assess. Now, because of the standards on our educational system, uh, we we know we the Department of Education, especially uh, the Bureau of the Assessment, we join different international assessment to check whether our educational standard or the educational standard of our country uh, will uh, is competitive no among or compared to the different or the other countries. Now, kaya nga, meron tayong mga katanungan. Are we globally competitive? Uh, when I am in elementary, at that time, sabi ng aking teacher, no, na ang Pinoy daw is one of the brightest people on earth. Okay? Naririnig nyo din po siguro yan, no, sa, sa mga teachers natin when we, when we are in elementary. And I think totoo naman, di ba? Totoo naman kasi, ang dami din nagiging tanyag ng mga Pinoy. Uh, lalo na hindi lang sa sa isang country, even kahit na sa buong mundo. Lalo na sa area of mathematics. If you remember, meron po tayong latest na nakakuha, no? naging naging bantog sa sa mathematics, sa Hong Kong Math Olympiads yata. Okay? Sa Hong Kong Math Olympiads where some of our students from Region 11, particularly uh, particular on the students of Santo Tomas, okay? they won as gold, silver, and bronze in that competition. So marami po tayong mga Pinoy na nagiging tanyag at mga nag, marami po tayong mga Pinoy na nagpapamalas ng angking mga katalinuhan sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. Kaya nga, yung teachers natin doon uh, sa elementary, tama naman sila. No, tama naman po talaga kayo. And hello, hello po sa aking mga teachers in elementary, sa Mako Heights Central Elementary School. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Now, go back to our st international standard. Now, last 2018, ito po. Okay? Last 2018, sumali po ang Pilipinas on the Program for International Student Assessment. PISA on 2018. And the Philippines rank uh, rank 76 po. Okay? So, in PISA 2018, we Filipinos or the result of the achievement, we rank 76 out of 79 countries. So, we are on the third, no? Third to the last. And aside sa PISA 2018, meron di po yung kasunod. And that, that was on 2019. Okay? So, sumali naman po tayo sa Teams 2019. Pero this time, 
Ang sumali lang ay nasa grade 4 mathematics. So lahat po ng mga grade 4. Kasi yung teams po, meron po siyang grade 4 at saka meron po siyang grade 8. The Philippines joined in this international uh, uh, international assessment uh, for grade 4 only. And in that assessment, we rank as 64. Okay. We rank as 64. So, kung makikita ninyo, from visa 2018, we rank 76 out of 79. Parang pagdating natin sa, uh, sa teams 2019, nagiging rank 64 tayo. So, ang tanong doon, tumaas ba kaya? No? Tumaka tumaas ba kaya yung standing ng ating uh, department or ng quality of our education here in the Philippines? Sad to say, hindi po. We rank at the bottom. So, rank 64 po tayo out of 64 countries. And imagine nyo po, ang mga subject areas po dito sa Teams 2019 are Mathematics and Science. Okay? Mathematics and Science. Now, ngayon, what should we feel about this result? Okay? Ano kaya yung nararamdaman? Ano kaya yung mga magiging mararamdaman nating mga teachers na ganun yung magiging, nagiging result? Now, sabi nila, with that result daw, there are possible reasons kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng ganoong result. Some of the people, uh, some people says that possible reasons may be hunger. So, totoo naman, di ba? Pagutom ang estudyante, ewan ko lang kung mas madali ba siyang matututo. Sa tingin natin, mahirap. Kaya nga, if we try to remember, one of the advocacy of our previous na uh, superintendent, no? uh, maybe year 20, ano, 2014, so nagkakaroon tayo na every time na magkakaroon ng not, not na test or Merong mga tinatawag nating uh, libreng pakain sa lahat ng mga estudyante. Free snacks. Another one, possible reasons, is, sabi nila, medium of instruction daw. Because the medium of instruction on those assessment are English. And then, especially sa teams, grade 4 man daw yung, ano, yung mga bata and then yung medium of instruction. But you know what? The teams or other international standards, they are using the medium of instruction based on the curriculum itself uh, mandated by our uh, by our our educational system. Di ba kung nakikita natin na sa grade four ang medium of instruction in mathematics is English, therefore yung question don is naka English. Pero ito parin yung sabi ng karamihan the medium of instruction. Another possible reasons, sabi nila, uh, class size. Okay? Kasi nga, in a classroom, maraming mga estudyante. Minsan pa nga, meron tayong in, in a classroom, meron tayong 50, 60, 70. In our school, meron pa kaming mga estudyante na 70 plus. Diba? Uh, nagkakaroon kasi ng parabang pagdami ng ating mga estudyante sa public high school. And mayroong mga improvement naman no, with regards sa building. Kaya lang, hindi pa talaga, pa talaga akma lahat ng mga facilities natin. So, yan po yung mga sabi-sabi no, na possible reasons. Uh, we can, we can re uh, search these reasons in the different uh, platforms like sa mga, sa mga YouTube, sa mga TV, and, uh, and mga, mga paper no, mga, na mga platforms like magazine or newspapers. Pero... Ito po yung sabi ng ating mahal na sekretary, Sekretary Briones, which is his uh, she cited no in an interview with Karin Dabila on ANC. Okay? Where doon sa ANC tinanong siya kung ano ba yung mga possible reasons. And according to Secretary Briones, sabi niya, the first reason daw of having low achievement score is the curriculum. So the curriculum itself uh, is the main reason why we had a low achievement result. And this will be followed by facilities. Okay? Yung mga pasilidad. 
if you try to remember, marami tayong mga estudyante or mga Pinoy na mga estudyante na nananalo sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo in terms of mga uh, different areas. It could be mathematics or science or English. Pero kung titignan natin, saan ba sila nang gagaling? Okay? They came from international schools, pero yung mga nag-take ng, ng assessment, uh, it came from different types of schools in the Philippines. Merong public, merong private, and karamihan sa atin sa public, kulang talaga tayo ng facilities. And that is one of the program that they are improving, no? especially in the term of uh, President Duterte, sabi ni uh, Secretary Briones. And the third one, sabi nga, tayo mismo. Tayo mismo ay isa sa mga dahilan no, kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng low achievement result. So sometimes teachers were lacking of, of trainings, mga seminars, especially in terms of technology. Okay? Then, Secretary Briones also added, sabi niya, uh, mathematics will focus more on problem solving. Application of concept but not so much in calculation. Focus on the process. So, ito po yung sabi ni Secretary Briones. So, uh, we, fellow, my fellow teachers in math, uh, fellow innovators, sabi ni Secretary Briones, we must focus on problem solving. Application of concept, we will not focus mainly on the calculation. Kasi nga, andun na daw yan, makikita naman yan sa sa mga application or program like the calculator. Okay? Now, ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung, yung ginawang study ng, ng PISA. Okay? So, may I request everyone no, to, to focus on the, the, this, this presentation. Okay? So, alamin natin siya kung ano ba yung nagiging dahilan. So, this is one of the, the presentation made from an episode of Stanford Truth which explains why Pinoy students became kulelat. Okay? So, may I play? What's the sound of this? Eat. 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 Okay. Constructed. Constructed. To... Sure. So yung kanina ba yung buong paragraph na binasa mo, naiintindihan mo ba siya? Konti lang. Ano yung pagkakaintindihan mo dun sa Ano po? Yung... Tanggalin mo na yung angle A, 105 plus the measure of angle B. Pag nagtuturo po yung teacher namin, kahit na-explain po ng mabuti. Pero Maklo. kapag ako na lang po mag-isa, nakakalimutan ko po yung mga kung paano isod, kung paano yung process. Be made change. Okay. So sa binasa mong yun, anong naintindihan mo? Clouds. Ano daw ibig sabihin ng climate change? Ang hirap itindihin. Tsaka ang hirap basahin. Tigrado yung mga pagsao. Napabalita kahapon ang pagiging kulel at umano ng Pilipinas pagdating sa reading comprehension, science at math. Ayon ito sa test na isinagawa ng Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development o OECD noong 2018. OECD is an intergovernmental organization that studies and develops global policies. This testing project is called PISA. Program for International Student Assessment. Ginagawa ito every three years to help national governments understand and address the needs of their students. 600,000 students from 79 countries participated in the test. All are between 15 to 16 years old with at least six years of formal education. Dalawang oras ang test na ito. One hour for reading and 30 minutes each for mathematics and science. Pinakamababa ang Pilipinas sa reading comprehension. We also got the second lowest scores in both math and science. This data represents 32 million students worldwide. It's the first time for Filipino students to take the PISA. 
na pagdesisyon ng raw ito ng Department of Education hindi para makipagkompetisyon kundi para iangat ang kalidad ng edukasyon sa bansa. Base nga sa test, halos isa lang sa bawat lima nating estudyante ang umabot sa level 2 proficiency. Ibig sabihin, naiintindihan ng binabasa at nasasagot ang tanong kung hindi ito gaanong komplikado. Beyond the test scores, the PISA findings suggest that socioeconomic status has a huge impact on education in the Philippines. Ayon sa report ng DepEd, mas mataas ang naging score sa reading comprehension ng mga estudyante mula sa private school by an average of 88 points. 85% of Filipino students are in public schools where the problems range from lack of classrooms to lack of learning materials. Dahil sa mga kakulangan ito, ang ilan ay nakakatungtong sa high school nang hindi pa natututong magbasa ng tama. Ka, kanon. Kanon. Kanat. Mas mataas rin ang naging score ng mga taga Region 3, 4A, 7, 8, NCR at CAR compared to the rest of the Philippines. Isa pa, 94% of the test takers speak their local language at home instead of English. And while our math and science subjects come in English textbooks, kadalasang tinuturo ito using the mother tongue. Since English ang ginamit para sa PISA, kung kulelat nga sa reading comprehension, ay mahihirapan na rin intindihin ang mga test sa math at science. Sa halagang 531 billion pesos ngayong taon, DepEd ang may pinakamalaking budget sa pamahalaan, pero ayon sa OECD, pinakamaliit pa rin daw ang ginagastos ng Pilipinas sa bawat mag-aaral. Still, it's important to note that it's not just about money. Indonesia spends nearly the same on its students as we do, but they perform better. Three times bigger naman ang budget per student ng Dominican Republic, pero kapwa kulelat natin. There are many more factors and insights in the 1,098-page PISA report, pero isa lang ang siniguro ni Secretary Leonor Briones. Gamit ang kaalamang nakuha rito, gagawin raw nila ang lahat para matukoy, matutukan at matugunan ang mga problema ng educational system sa bansa. I'm Shaila Garde and I stand for truth. Okay, so, ayan po. Now, totoo naman ano, pag mahina ka talaga sa English, uh, tawag natin doon, damay-damay na yung dalawang subject because the medium of instruction in mathematics and science are English. So, isa yan siguro no, na dapat nating titignan. So, we, we math teachers, we are also encouraged no, to teach uh, reading, no? Re reading, uh, reading skills to our students. Now, based on the PISA re uh, result, okay, sabi ng PISA result, uh, which assess mathematical literacy as minor domain, which defined Sec, uh, six proficiency levels and nabanggit kanina hindi ma uh, iilan lang sa atin no iilan lang sa ating mga estudyante nakaabot ng level 2 now on that report sabi niya Filipino students achieve an average of 353 points in mathematical literacy this is really significantly lower than the OECD average which is the 489 points and is classified as below level 1 proficiency. So imagine that one. The In the area of mathematics literacy, we are below level 1 na proficiency. So if you try to observe on the table, the region 11, meron tayong mean score na 344. Mas mababa pa nga tayo sa nabanggit na general average ng Filipino students which is 353. So meron talaga tayong mga kakulangan and this is one way no of reflecting no reflecting uh, our effort our our uh, the different factors in our educational system especially here in the region 11. And what is very tawag doon para bang alarming okay that there are some factors that tend to create or tend or make maybe a re, this is maybe a reason why we got low achievement result and based on the interview daw made by the PISA report uh, one of the the ano daw, the problem is the socioeconomics which comprises yung mga yung hunger yung mga yung kahirapan ng ating mga estudyante and ito yung pinaka very alarming the perception of the students in mathematics if you try to observe kanina sa video uh, yung mga bata sila mismo sabi nila 
mahirap talaga yung math, no? Mahirap talaga ang math. Then, parang natatawa na lang, uh, babagsak ako. Parang ganun. And this perception is not only for students. In fact, we can see and we can observe this perception even in our teachers. Okay? So, pa paano ngayon na magkakaroon ng positive na perception ang ating mga estudyante kung tayo mismo mga teachers are nagkakaroon ng negative impression about mathematics? So, this may be a challenge to all of us teachers. Kasi palagi natin naririnig, ganyan talaga, ano, mahirap talaga yung math. Even our parent, may, ah, ganyan, mahirap talaga yung math, anak, kasi ganun. Yung score ko din, ganito. Okay? Mga ganun na mga, mga scenario. Now, ito po yung report na binanggit ng PISA. This is 2018 and it, uh, this was uh, released on 2019. Now, ngayon naman, pag-usapan naman natin yung bago lang na result, yung sa TEAMS or the Trends International Assessment or System Assessment. So, sige po, panoorin po natin ito. IEA's TIMS is the world's longest running global assessment of student achievement in mathematics and science. Directed by the TIMS and Pearls International Study Center at Boston College, TIMS has monitored trends in mathematics and science achievement around the world since 1995, gathering high quality data that policymakers and educators use to make evidence based decisions about education systems and curricula. TIMS 2019 was the seventh cycle of TIMS, providing 24 years of trend data monitoring progress in student achievement at the fourth and eighth grades. TIMS provides critical information about what students know and can do in mathematics and science as countries work to prepare youth for a world in which both mathematics and science play an increasingly important role in helping to solve global challenges. The health of our planet depends on upcoming generations that can be leaders in technological innovation and that can participate in a global society prepared to protect our environment and well-being. In 2019, 64 countries and eight benchmarking systems participated in TIMS, and altogether, nearly 600,000 students were assessed. The TIMS mathematics and science assessments are based on countries' shared expectations of what students should know and be able to do and included almost 1,000 mathematics and science achievement items. TIMS 2019 also marked the beginning of the transition to digital assessment, enabling TIMS to include more interactive and innovative item types that engage students. About half of the participating countries administered the eTIMS version of the assessments. In fourth grade mathematics, Singapore was the top performing country. Together with Hong Kong, Korea, Chinese Taipei, and Japan, the East Asian countries led other TIMS countries by a substantial margin. A 26 point gap set them apart from the next highest scoring countries. At the eighth grade, the five East Asian countries again outperformed the rest of the countries, Singapore, Chinese Taipei, and Korea, followed by Japan and then Hong Kong. The gap between these countries and the rest was even greater at 35 score points. Results for science were a little different, especially at the fourth grade. In fourth grade science, Singapore and Korea had the highest average achievement, followed by a 21-point gap before the Russian Federation and Japan. Chinese Taipei and Finland also performed very well. At 8th grade, Singapore was the top performer, scoring 34 points higher than Chinese Taipei, Japan, and Korea. The Russian Federation and Finland and the rest of the countries followed after an 18-point gap. To describe the kinds of mathematics and science that 4th and 8th grade students know and can do, TIMS reports achievement at four international benchmarks. Low, intermediate, high, and advanced. Students at the low benchmark only have some basic knowledge of the subject. In contrast, students at the advanced benchmark can apply their understanding and knowledge in a variety of relatively complex situations and explain their reasoning. For the 58 countries participating at the fourth grade, 
most are educating their students beyond minimum proficiency in mathematics and science, with 92% of students across countries reaching the low benchmark in both subjects. Only 6 to 7% of students met the advanced benchmarks. Not surprisingly, the highest performing countries in terms of average scores also had the highest percentages of students reaching the advanced benchmark. For example, in Singapore, 54% of fourth grade students met the advanced benchmark in mathematics. Across the 39 countries at the eighth grade, 85 to 87% of students reached the low benchmarks. Only five to 7% reached the advanced benchmarks. In comparison, building on its top achievement in mathematics at fourth grade, Singapore also had 51% of its 8th grade students reach the advanced benchmark. For over 24 years, TIMS data have been an invaluable tool to policymakers and educators around the world as they evaluate their education systems. TIMS data are used to spur new education initiatives and to later gauge the effectiveness of those initiatives. Recent trends compare average achievement in TIMS 2019 to average achievement in 2015. Longer-term trends look at changes in average achievement since the inception of TIMS in 1995. In fourth grade mathematics, both recent and long-term trends show more countries with improvements than declines in average achievement. Short-term trends show 14 of the 45 participating countries had higher average achievement in TIMS 2019 than in 2015, compared to 8 with declines and 23 staying the same. Of the 16 countries that participated in 1995, 13 improved, 2 remained stable, and only 1 declined. Similarly, Average mathematics achievement at the 8th grade improved in more countries than it declined over both the short term and the long term. In the short term, 13 countries improved, 16 were stable, and 4 declined. In the long term, 9 countries improved, 5 were unchanged, and 4 decreased. In fourth grade science, the short-term trends from TIMS 2015 showed a less positive pattern than in mathematics, an equal number of 10 improvements and 10 declines, with 24 countries staying the same. However, the long-term trends from 1995 in science were similar to mathematics, 11 countries improved, 3 were unchanged, and 2 decreased. Also, the science trends at 8th grade showed more improvements than declines in both the short term and the long term. Since 2015, 11 countries improved, 17 were stable, and 5 countries declined. In the long term, 8 countries improved, 6 were unchanged, and 4 declined. In 4th grade mathematics, 27 countries had no gender gap in average achievement but boys outperformed girls in another 27 countries. This is due in part to nine countries developing a gender gap favoring boys since the last TIM cycle in 2015. In 2019, girls outperformed boys in four countries. Gender equity was more prevalent in eighth grade mathematics, with 26 countries experiencing no gender gap. Boys outperformed girls in six countries, and girls outperformed boys in seven countries. In fourth grade science, there was gender equity and average achievement in 33 countries. Girls outperformed boys in 18 countries, compared to boys outperforming girls in seven countries. In eighth grade science, there was gender equity in 18 countries, but girls had higher average achievement than boys in 15 countries, nearly as many. Boys outperformed girls in six countries. This video presents TIMS 2019 country comparisons in mathematics and science achievement and trends in achievement at the 4th and 8th grades. To view a video about home, school, and classroom contexts for mathematics and science teaching and learning, and to find out more about the TIMS 2019 international results, visit TIMS2019.org. TIMS is a project of IEA, 
and is directed by the Timms and Pearls International Study Center at Boston College. Hey, so ayan po ang nagiging report ng ating teams. No? If we try to observe po, uh, we have two, two areas in mathematics, grade 4, uh, two components no? or grade level in mathematics, grade 4 and grade 8. So kung nakikita nyo po sa video kanina, uh, only, on grade, only in grade 4 lang po nakikita yung Philippines and not on grade 8 because the, uh, the Philippines participated on grade 4 only. Okay, so this is the first, uh, this is not the first time that the Philippines joins the teams. Uh, meron din siyang na join na, na assessment last times with the, uh, last time with teams, and makikita natin yan with with our next presentation, which is the based on the report of our teams. Okay, so ayan po. In 2003, this is the first attempt that we joined or the attempt of the Philippines where we joined the team's assessment. And in that time, we obtained a general average of 364 for boys and 352 for girls. But in 2019, okay, we did not join po sa 2007, 2011, 2015. Okay? So in 2019, we joined, but the result would be lower than the average result in 2003. Nagkakaroon na lang po tayo ng 315. And for girls, nagkaroon tayo ng 280. Okay? Now, there are three issues concerned with the team's report. Number one, the connection between the socioeconomics and achievement. So, pari-pariho po yung nagiging resulta ng PISA at saka team's report. One of the factors of having a low average or low achievement result is the socio-economic standing or status ng ating mga estudyante. So, makikita naman po na talaga natin no, na pag wala gutom ka, kulang ka ng mga gamit, okay, wala ka talagang, kung meron man, hindi talaga to the maximum capacity of the student na magagampanan mo, magagawa mo lahat ng mga pangangalan o pinapagawa sa atin sa schools. Another one is the teacher factors. Sabi nga, 70% of the teachers are in need of professional development in the integration of technology. You know what? In teams, meron kasing dalawang klase no, ng, ng achievement. Meron tayong paper, yung booklet type, and the electronic type. Tayo sa Pilipinas, sumali tayo dun tayo sa paper type. Hindi tayo sumali sa uh, electronic na type ng testing. So, 70% of the teachers are in need of professional development in the integration of the technology. So, kailangan daw talaga natin. Kaya nga, napagtanto natin, no? points to ponder, what happened to almost every year of conducting mass training to teachers or teachers and other trainings like mga pedagogy training. Ano ba yung nangyayari? If, if we remember almost a year, no? some of us, kasi nga siya nagtuturo ng grade 7, grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, almost every year andun siya naka-attend sa training. Others naman, kung malaki yung school, uh, siguro may mga pagitan lang, no? Pero every year may ginagawang training. So, ano ba yung nagiging nangyayari doon? Ano ba yung nagiging resulta noon? So, maybe this is a call to our government, especially to, to the DepEd, our educational system, na hindi lang po pagbibigay. Pagbibigay ng training, kundi aalamin din natin ano ba yung nagiging resulta ng training with regards to the achievement or the uh, student learning itself, okay? And the last one, the last issues of concern is the school safety and orderly environment. So, isa daw sa mga pinakamalaking factor na nagkakaroon tayo ng problema is on the bullying na area. So, may mga bata na binubuli, kaya nga nagkakaroon ng mga pagka, nagpagbabawas na bang 
self uh, anong tawag ba doon parang nagkakaroon sila ng self pity so these are the issues of concern that was reported by our teams now with those result on the pisa and the teams now those international standard maybe that the one call us to reflect and not only call us to reflect but it may be call us to all teachers a call for action okay let us think about this one okay try to reflect did we really teach our students did our teaching had impact to our students is it the strategies, our strategies, the way we teach in the classroom? Or is it on the process? Kasi nga, ang dami natin ginagawang process. Meron tayong UBD, ang -da dami na, napag-aralan natin mga proseso, especially in teaching. Or maybe on the assessment. Now, what can we do to, uh, to improve our achievement so these are some of the reflection that i think it needs no a call for action that's why together let us make a difference it is not matter of the rank but a reflection on how we can improve our achievement what can we do as a teacher so may i request everyone to make a comment no to make a comment post a comment on our reflection in our comment section okay ano ba yung mga kailangan natin gagawin ano ba yung mga a call to action to every teacher especially here in the division of Dabao de Oro mga mga kailangan natin gampanan mga kailangan nating baguhin so that ma mapa-improve natin no ang ating achievement and for us in mathematics area, this is one of the reason why we created the Mathematics Enhancement Program. We try to enhance our teachers. We try to upskill our teachers with the different areas. Okay? And this one is a part of it. We will start on the assessment. Okay? We will start on the assessment by maybe a copying or making same type of questions that's why our our title no in our seminar is developing a uh, developing a teams like assessment okay an international standard like questions or questionnaires so mamaya po pag-aaralan natin in our second second session okay pag-aaralan natin kung ano ba yung framework ng teams. Paano ba sila gumawa ng mga questions? Ano ba yung mga mga topic or the content on that 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 assessment? Uh, paano ba uh, ano ba yung procedure on how it was implemented? Paano ba paano ba kinuha or identify or determine yung mga schools, yung mga estudyante? So pag-aaralan natin 'yan in our second session. And Para to end up with our reflection, maybe we can have this one no, by, by a quote, uh, improvement begins with I. So this is a challenge to all of us, uh, to us teachers, my fellow educators. If we want to improve our educational system, our educational uh, achievement, our improvement on the student learning, then maybe we will start on improving ourselves, in improving our teaching, and improving our assessment. So this end our first session. Thank you, teachers, and God bless. Mamaya po, magsasama pa tayo sa ating second session. Yan. So thank you po. Ayan. Well, thank, thank you so much, teacher Sir. Michael. Dandan. Thank you so much, Teacher Michael Dandan, for uh, very insightful um, inputs that we had. And 
Ma'am Bess, um, let's have our shout out. Yes. And we Ayan would like well, also to remind we would like also to remind every, our teacher participants to accomplish the links given po in order you to acquire certificate of participation and attendance. Ayan, shout out daw from Mako Heights. Yan, Criselle Quesada Sibonga. Good day from Mako Heights Central Elementary School, Davao de Oro. Happy to know the reason why. So, marami tayong learn for today, especially of the facts of in terms of assessment, no? It is um, sad, however, very motivating as teachers. Ayon. So, th their comments, ma'am, ma ma teacher Bessie, are their um, reflections. Kasi sabi na daw ni teacher Michael, they will comment their reflections sa inputs kanina or sa binigay ni teacher Michael. So, these are the reflections po na nakakomment. So, according to Sir Ryan De La Torre, primary level should focus numeracy and literacy comprehension will follow on the next level. Well, thank you so much for yes. that, Sir Ryan. And How we also have another insight. Ayan, from Teacher Ellie. Ayan, we should align instruction instructions to learning standards. Yun po ang kanyang naging reflection. Ayan. Thank you, Teacher Ellie. If you also have, um, um, kung kinsay may gusto magpa-shout out nila, you can actually comment your school po sa mga nakikinig dyan. Mm -hmm. Yes, very, um, ito yung sinabi talaga yung quotation ni, ni Sir Michael, improvement begins with I. So That from Kabuyuan Elementary School. And another comment we have. And of All course, right. Teacher Bessie, uh, we also have from Pantukan South District from Napnapan Elementary School. It's my alma mater, Napnapan Elementary School. Yeah, Hello good po, morning. Kaway, kaway kaway po from Napnapan Elementary School. Hello po, teachers. Uh -huh. Yeah, and if everyone has still their personal reflection on our um, reflection questions that was, what can we do to improve our achievements as teachers right now, especially that we have learned um, everything, the facts that teacher Michael has given to us this morning. Ayan, what are those things that we have learned? We will really love to know everything that you have reflected on. Please use our comment boxes in our Facebook page, in our Facebook private group, and also in our YouTube channel where you are virtually watching. And Ayan, of course, don't forget. Out. Yes, Teacher Bessie. And of course, don't forget to use our official hashtag, Teacher Bessie. Ano nga yung official has hashtag natin? Hashtag DDOMEP2021. Ayon, you can show on screen. Hashtag DDOMEP2021. And speaking of giving of certificates, Ma Teacher Bessie, we will also be awarding the Watch Awardees. So to those yes. participants who um, nag-click po ng kanilang attendance, na sila po yung pinakamaaga, and uh, we will be flashing your names later on. So, Yon. congratulations in advance. And this is a call to everyone who are aspiring to be watch awardees. Wow, ayun may mataas na reflection. Mataas na reflection. From um, Thelma Nanali, am I right? Let us read her reflection. Anyone? Again, again, uh, our attendance link. Yes, Ma'am Telma. Ayun, saan An ideal math teacher is the new normal, but 
new normal must be a computer literate, ICT trains innovative on projects where students engage and apply math in an easy way should have creative mindsets where in the learning process will be delivered to the learners despite the pandemic. Enthusiasm in the learning process, find ways to help learners understand the lesson. An ideal teacher is patience, firm, a heart to understand the learner since each one has different stories to tell and has a big heart to love to love the students. Ayon. Ayon. So, Ayon, thank you so much, Teacher Thelma. Dami nating na-learn for today. Yes, and of course, bitin pa nga tayo, Teacher Bessie, because we will be also uh, we will be having our session too together with Teacher Michael Dandan. Um, after this, um, shout outs and reminders to our teacher participants. Aha. Uh -huh. All okay, right, I we guess. welcome once, once again, again our, our speaker. Uh, session speaker for today, none other than Sir Michael Eric Dandan. Welcome back on screen, Sir Eric. Okay. So, hello, hello, once again, teachers. Uh, we are done kanina with our session one, and this time we will proceed to our session two, which, which is all about the Teams 2019 Mathematics Framework. Okay, so ngayon, sa session two, pag-uusapan natin, no, kung ano ba yung nagiging framework, paano ba ginawa, or paano ba nag-implement si Teams, okay, on the assessment, especially in mathematics. So, we will focus, since... They, there are two components, the science and math, but we will focus only in mathematics. But before we proceed to mathematics na framework, uh, alamin muna natin kung ano yung background ng teams. Okay? So I think our our teachers, my fellow educators, my fellow innov uh, innovators, ready na silang lahat. So let us proceed to our session two, assessment framework in mathematics. So we, let us start with what is a teams okay uh, this is an international study launched by the IEA in 1992 so stud to study the mathematics and science achievement and the context in which the learning occurs so yung focus nila andun sa mathematics and science and it started in 1992 now originally the teams uh, name was the third international mathematics and science study. But in 2003, it was rebranded no, as the Trends International Mathematics Science and Study. Now, since its first administration in 1995, it has been administered every four years. So, ibig sabihin do, the last time that we had our 2000 uh, teams assessment is uh, was 2019. So mag-add lang tayo ng apat na years, maybe on 2020, uh, 2023, magkakaroon ulit ng teams. And we hope no, na yung Pilipinas ay sasali na sa assessment na yan and ipasible yung Math 4 at saka Math 8. And ang pinaka the best doon, we pray na sana tataas yung status natin with regards to our uh, performance, no? especially in the area of mathematics. Now, TIMS also provides international comparable data on the performance in mathematics and science and students in the fourth and eighth grade and even last year of high school, but this time wala pang pinapalabas na last year of high school na implementation si Teams. Fourth and saka eighth grade lang muna. Now, if you try to observe in our video, nakikita nyo dun, the, compari uh, the, comparison, uh, the comparison between the, the different countries, yung mga advanced, yung mga students in the, uh, in the advanced level na mga countries at saka yung mga nasa baba. And including their uh, comparison no, sa result nila in the previous 
implementation of teams or assessment of teams. Another one, a comparison, a comparison between the gender, no? And the banggit nga kanina, no? The the boys daw out mas magaling kung baga mas na mas based on the result mas magaling daw yung boys in mathematics compared to girls. And the result of teams will inform education or will inform our our Department of Education as a whole and then inform the education policy and so that they will be having a discussion on the national and the global level on its inception. No? And sometimes, based on that result, magkakaroon din tayo ng reflection. Ano ba yung mga kailangang i-improve? Ano ba yung kailangan natin dapat gawin para mapataas? Ano ba yung mga kakulangan? And the teams also, meron siyang nabanggit ko nga kanina, yung sibling niya, yung PERLS, that is Progress and International Reading Literacy Study. And it is also supported by IEA. Now, as mentioned, there are two major components on assessment. The two subjects are the mathematics and the science. And in implementing our team's assessment, hindi lang to direct na parang not, ano, hindi siya parang not na ibibigay lang agad sa ating mga estudyante. Okay. What is teams all about? It comprises of different set of background questionnaires. Hindi lang siya nakasalalay sa ating achievement ng mga bata, but also on its implementation as a whole. Yung teachers, meron tayong mga, mga student questionnaires. This is aside from our achievement. Okay? Meron tayong test, student test for achievement, and meron din tayong student questionnaires. Dito nila sasagutan kung ano ba yung mga problema, ano ba yung mga na-encounter nila, how, how did the teacher teach no, in, in the classroom. Meron din tayong tinatawag na school questionnaires. Meron din teachers' questionnaires and national curriculum questionnaires. So, these are the questionnaires no, na nakapaloob sa implementation sa assessment ng teams. Now, the, the achievement test implemented by teams, okay, nakasalalay no, sa tatlong mga katanungan. Una, what are the students expected to learn ano ba yung ano ba dapat matutunan ng mga bata and it focus on the intended curriculum so when we talk about intended curriculum it refers to the national the social and the educational context as a whole so intended curriculum the mathematics and science that society intends to or for students to learn and how education system should be organized to facilitate the learning. Another question is that what is being taught in the school? Okay. Ano ba yung mga tinuturo sa school? And it focus on the implementation of the curriculum. So when we talk of implementation to curriculum, uh, ito, mababanggit na dito yung mga school, yung teacher itself, and the classroom context. So implemented curriculum is actually taught in the classroom, the characteristics of those teaching it, and how it is taught. And last question would be, what are the students learning? Ano na ba ngayon ang natutunan ng mga bata? And this is focused on the attained curriculum. And it refers to the student outcomes, the student characteristics, and the attained curriculum, this is how, is, how it is taught, what, is, uh, what it is the students have learned, and what they think about the subject. Okay, and nabanggit kanina, no? uh, that is very alarming. Okay, parang accepted na ng mga bata na mahina sila on that particular subject. Kaya nga, laban. No? Dapat, we must motivate our children. Love the subject. Do not love only the teacher, but love the subject itself. Okay? So, working with this model, uh, teams achievement describes student learning in the participating countries. And so, okay. Simulan na natin, no? Pag-usapan yung mathematics framework. 
So this is the framework used by the Teams 2019. Okay? And then mamaya po in our third session, uh, pag-uusapan naman natin yung Teams on uh, uh, Teams questions release no in 2011. So ito, 2019 ito na assessment. Na Teams 2019 Mathematics Assessment, meron siyang dalawang domain. Meron tayong tinatawag na content domain and the cognitive domain. I know some of you are familiar with the cognitive domains, pero specified lang talaga ang ginawa ng teams. Unlike other different domains, no cognitive domains that we are we are encounter in our siguro sa ating mga pag-aaral, no. Now the content domain are the following. In the fourth grade math, this is referring to the grade four mathematics. The content domains are the following: number, which is comprises the fifty percent of the total items or the total tests, measurement and geometry, that is thirty percent, and data, which is twenty percent. For grade eight, we have the following content domains. So, nagiging apat na ngayon: number, thirty percent. Meron na tayong algebra, which is also 30%. Geometry, 20%. And data and probability, 20%. Kaya nga, in our new curriculum, if we try to to observe, no, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng spiral ngayon sa K-12. In our previous na mga years, nakafocus lang tayo in one area. This time, nagkakaroon tayo ng spiral. Kasi nga, in our international standard, Andun lahat kasi, di ba? Number, algebra, geometry, and data, and probability. Now, those are the content domains in mathematics assessment. This time, we will proceed on the cognitive domain. Okay? So, we have three cognitive domain, which are knowing, applying, and reasoning. So, ang dami nating mga cognitive domain, pero ang ginamit ng teams, ito lang yung tat uh, itong tatlo lang. Knowing, applying, and reasoning. And in knowing, we have 40% for uh, grade 4 math, 35% in grade 8, applying 40% in grade 4 math, and 40% in grade 8 math, and then 20% for, for reasoning on grade 4 math, and 25% in grade 8 mathematics. So ngayon, pag Pag-uusapan natin una yung content domain in mathematics. Ano ba yung mga subject? Ano ba yung mga topic na nakafocus on number, in geometry, in data, and so on? So we will start on the fourth grade math. Now, alam kong meron tayong mga audience, mga participants, mga fellow teachers, innovators, na siguro na, na nanonood ngayon where maybe you will think ano, like yung ako, kinderman ako, ako grade 1 man, grade Three, grade 5, grade 6, grade 7, grade 9, 10, 11, and 12. Baka hindi na ito applicable sa akin. Okay, like sa fourth grade lang naman nakafocus, sa grade 8 lang naman. Hindi po, ang tinitignan po natin ngayon, yung proseso po ng pagkagawa. And tayo po na mga teachers from grade 1 to grade 3, yung paraan po natin ng pagbibigay ng assessment makakatulong po pagdating nila sa grade 4. Likewise, yung grade 5 at saka grade 6 at saka grade 7, makakatulong po kayo pagdating sa grade 8. And the grade 9, grade 10, sa mga ibang assessment tayo. Kasi pare-pareho lang naman sila ng framework. Sa PISA na framework and even in our national achievement test, okay, parang gagayahin na natin yung framework ng teams para aangat tayo. ba? So, for grade 4, mathematics content domain, we will start on the number. So, number provides the foundation of mathematics in primary school. So, 50% of the assessment is devoted no, in, this, in this area. And it is apportioned as follows. We have Whole numbers, which is 20%, 25% rather. Uh, expression, simple equation and relation, 15%. And fraction and decimal, 10%. So a total of 50%. So yung 50% of number, uh, num or number, hinati-hati po siya on those topics. Now, ano ba yung mga lumalabas natin sa whole numbers? Okay, the 25%, which is comprised the whole numbers, 
Okay, ito yung mga mga dapat nating ma-encounter o ma-discuss or maturo sa ating mga estudyante. It demonstrates knowledge on the place value, yung two-digit to six-digit numbers, represent whole numbers with words, diagram, number lines, or symbols, or order of numbers. We have also add and subtract up to four-digit numbers, including computation in simple contextual problems. Okay? We have multiply up to three digit by one digit and two digit by two digit numbers. And also division up to three digit by one digit numbers, including the computation in simple contextual problems. Another topic on, on whole numbers, we must taught or we must teach our, our students with problem solving that involve add and even numbers, the multiples, the factors of numbers, rounding up numbers to the nearest 10,000 and making estimates. So ito po dapat yung mga naituturo natin no? before the students proceed or go to the, the, the assessment. Kasi pag hindi po natin naituro yan, eh, malamang, bababa din yung score nila. So we are challenged teachers, if possible, mas maganda maituro natin ito grade 3 pa lang para pagdating sa grade 4, ayun. Magaling na yung bata. Okay? And we have also combined two or more properties of numbers or operations to solve problems in context. So that is for whole numbers. Next is for the expression, simple equation, and relationship, which is 15% no, of our assessment. So yung mga topic na dapat natin ituro sa mga bata, find the missing number or operation in a number sentence. Like 17 plus W equals 29. Baka sabi nila, uy, ano yan? Algebra naman yan. Okay. Pari-pariho lang naman po kasi variable lang naman yung W. Okay. In our in our elementary year level, uh, uh, elementary na level, ang uh, ginagawa natin po, box, di ba? 17 plus box equals 29. Kaya pinapalitan natin ng mga picture. So, siguro, we will train our students at that early stage, gawin na natin mga, uh, gamit na tayo ng mga variables. Uh, number two, identify or write expressions or number sentence to represent problem situations that may involve unknowns. So ito na yung mga binabanggit natin ng mga variables. Ito yung tinatawag natin unknowns. Third, identify and use relationship in a well-defined pattern. Okay, describe the relationship between the adjacent terms or generate pairs of whole numbers given a, role, a rule, okay? And for fractions and decimals, which comprise the 10% of the number, number uh, area of the content domain for mathematics 4 or grade 4, uh, we have recognized fraction as a part of wholes or collection. Represent fraction using words, numbers, or models. Compare and order simple fractions and add and subtract simple fraction, including those set in the problem situation. So, we can use fractions with the denominators of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 100. So, teachers, alam ko, some of us, no, nagkakaroon pa ng mga ng kalituhan na kung kaya ba ng mga bata ito kung saan may mga fraction na tayo where our denominators is from 2 to 100. But then, we will not ano no, look down on the, the ability of our students right now. Kasi if we try to observe very uh, high, no, upgraded na masyado yung mga yung intellectual capability ng ating mga, ng mga kabataan ngayon. Imagine, Kinder pa lang, magaling ng mag-cellphone, magaling ng maglaro ng mga ano sa games sa, sa cellphone. Uh, yung ibang teachers nga, nahihirapan pa mag-aral ng cellphone. May mga, may mga adult pa tayo na hindi lang sa teachers. Magaling na uh, hindi nahihirapan magamit ng technology pero yung mga bata ngayon parang andali lang para sa kanila. So we are challenged to, to implement this one para makakatulong ito sa kanilang uh, achievement result. 
Number two, demonstrate knowledge on decimal place value, including representing decimal using words, numbers, or models. Compare, order, and round decimals. Add and subtract decimals, including the set in problems equation. So decimals may have one or two decimal places. And then we allow them for computations. Mas maganda i-relate siya on money area. Kasi uh, they, they can relate no, in a real-life situation. Now, I have here some samples, no, some problem, samples on 2019 teams. Okay? And for grade 4. Yan. Kung makikita ninyo, yung content domain, uh, content domain niya is number and the cognitive domain is on applying. Sabi niya, there were 12 liters of water in the tank. Rabi then poured 3 liters of water into the tank and Indera poured another 3 liters of water into the tank. How can the amount of water in the tank be calculated? Okay, so mga ganun na mga example. Another example of team's problems under numbers are this one. Solves a, uh, solves a word problem involving subtraction of a non-unit fraction from one. So Anna is cycling to her grandmother's house. She, had, uh, she has cycled three over eight of the way. So what fraction of the distance does An Anna have left to cycle? Another? This is for reasoning area or cognitive domain. Uh, it devises two ways of grouping objects that satisfy two conditions. A teacher wants to put 30 students in a group so that each group has the same number of students and each group has an odd number of students. Show two different ways the teacher could make the groups. Okay, so meron tayo mga problem na mga scenario, ano? And then they could enhance the anali anali analytical capability of our students magkakaroon may improve yung reasoning area nila aspect nila okay so those are the sample problems under number ah meron pa pala ah ito naman okay hindi measurement and geometry na pala ito so this is the content domain under the measurement and geometry okay so the two topics areas in measurement and geometry are as follows measurement which is 15% then geometry is also 15%. So it comprises our our content domain na 30%. So, ayan. So ano ba yung mga dapat nating pag-aralan under measurement? So measure and estimate estimate length in terms of millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers, and then solve problems involving length. Next, we have also solved problems involving mass, particular on the gram and kilogram. So in volume, milliliter and liter, and time, minutes and hours. Identify appropriate types and sizes of unit and read scales. And the third one, solve problems involving perimeter of the polygons, areas of rectangles, areas of shapes covered with squares, or partial squares, and then booleans filled with cubes. That is, that is for measurement. Next is on geometry. So for geometry, we want to teach them with identification and drawing mga parallel and perpendicular lines. Identify and draw right angles. Angles smaller or larger than right angles. Ito yung mga tinatawag nating acute angle and obtuse angle. And then we try to compare angles by its size. We also want to use elementary properties, no? Including the line and the rotational symmetry to describe, compare, and create common two-dimensional shapes like circles, triangles, quadrilaterals, and other polygons. So, Mamaya, ma-encounter ninyo, meron palang, we are in elementary, in grade 4, merong discussion on the symmetry with regards to shape. Okay? Third, use elementary properties to describe and compare three-dimensional shapes, cubes, 
rectangular solids, cones, uh, cylinders, and spheres. And relate this with their two-dimensional representation. So those are for geometry. So proceed tayo on its sample. We have for grade 4. Ayan. So th this is under the cognitive domain. Okay. Meron siyang, ano no, prang symmetrical. So ang tanong dito, complete this figure to the dash line. Okay. To the dash line is a line of symmetry. Click squares on the grid. So, this is under on the electronic, kaya nga i-click lang nila. We have also another example for applying. Okay. Justin has many of these triangles and square panels that fit together to make three-dimensional shape. Triangle and the square. Then Justin makes each of the shapes shown below. Fill in the table the first one has been done for you. Okay. So, mga ganun, ano? Then, another sample for team's problem for grade 4 uh, under the measurement content domain. Okay, ayan. Applying naman ito. The square above can be made by putting together smaller shapes. Complete the table with the number of each shape that are needed to cover the whole square. So, yan po yung mga problems in grade 4 in 2019. Mga parang ganun po yung pagkakagawa. Next, we will proceed on the data, the last content domain for grade eight, uh, grade four mathematics. So, data content consists of two topic areas: reading, interpreting, uh, interpreting, representing data, which is fifteen percent. Using data to solve problems, which is five percent. So, ano ba yung mga dapat nating ituturo sa kanila? We have they must or the student must. Learn to read and interpret data from tables, spectrographs, bar graphs, line graph, and pie charts. So, ituturo natin na uh, natin ito no sa mga bata on how they understand or interpret mga different types of chart. Number two, organize and represent data to help answer questions. And for using data to solve problems, we have Use data to answer questions that go beyond directly reading data displays. Example, solve problems and perform computation using data. Combine data from two or more sources. Draw conclusions based on the data. And we will proceed to the sample problems under measurement, uh, under data. So we have the knowing na level, cognitive domain. Okay. You have there a graph. Okay, that shows the water level in Adam for 10 weeks. What was the water level for 8 weeks? So they must, inter uh, they must inter learn to interpret this one. Then, another example for applying. Skyla recorded the number of cars that traveled along her street each morning. So, day, Monday to Friday, a number of cars. Ayan, makikita natin sa table. So, he, she started making a graph on her data. Yeah, what number should Scalar use to label the horizontal lines on her graph? Ayun. Another example for, for data, we have the reasoning apart. We have the weight, the weight of animals, cheetah, lion, leopard, leopard. Okay, and then we are asked to make a pictograph. Okay. Yan po yung mga sample. Now, another example for data. We have also a table na type of uh, mga beer. Sun, panda, black, brown. Okay, ayan. Then, weigh, weight nila, 150, 200, 250. Yeah, use the data to complete the graph. Okay. So, for eight grade level. Ito na yung mga pang secondary na, na area. So, alam ko, excited yung mga grade 8 dito. So, we have the content domain, number, algebra, geometry, data, and probability. So, for number, we have the following. Integers, 10%. Fraction and decimal, 10%. Ratio and proportion. And percentage or percent is also 10%. So, for fraction and decimals, we have 
we must use various models and repre representations. Compare and order fraction and decimals. And then identify equivalent fraction and decimal. Then also number two, compute with fraction and decimals, including the set in problem situations. So we must include problem solving, no? problem situations in dealing with our fractions and decimals. For integers, we have demonstrate understanding of properties of numbers and operations. Find the use of multiples and, and factors. Identify prime numbers, evaluate positive integer, powers of numbers, evaluate square roots of a perfect square up to 144, and solve problems involving square root of a whole number. So grade 4 pa lang, dapat matututo na sila for finding the square root of a certain number. Number two, compute and solve problems with positive and negative numbers, including through movement on the number line or various models. So best representation no, on dealing with the positive and negative numbers are the number line. So we will try to, to relate no, those positive and negative numbers as low, uh, losses, uh, gains, uh, also in the thermometers, ano ba yung positive, ano ba yung negative, asan ba yung mainit, asan ba yung malamig. Okay, so with ratio proportion and percent, uh, percent na, na topic, we have identify and find equivalent ratios, model a given situation by using a ratio, divide a quantity according to a given ratio, then solve problems involving proportions or percent, including converting between percent and fraction or decimals or vice versa. So we will teach the students on how to convert percentage to our percent to fraction or fraction to percent, including mga proportions, ratio and proportions. Now for the sample, meron tayo dito sa number na knowing the part. Uh, we solved problems involving subtraction of negative numbers. On Thursday, the lowest temperature in, uh, in CTX was six, uh, six degrees Celsius. And the lowest temperature in the city Y was negative 3 degrees Celsius. What was the difference between the lowest temperature in the cities? So this involved negative numbers or integers, positive and negative numbers. Next, we have applying you know, cognitive domain on numbers. We have a piece of a string was 45 centimeter long. Then it was divided into two pieces of ratio, uh, four is to five. What, what is the length of the shorter piece of string in centimeters? Yan. Another example for grade eight under number na content domain. We have the square below. The number in its row are add to one, row add to one. The number in its, row, its column add to one and the number in both diagonals add to one. So, ano kaya yung magiging value ni x if 1 over 5 add by 1? Okay. Now, next. Next content domain is on algebra. Okay. So, 30% of the assessment is devoted to this, con uh, this topic. And it comprises with two topics areas. Expression, operations, and equation. Then another one, relationship and function. So relationship and function, meron lang siyang 10%, but expression, operation, and equation, it comprise 20% on algebra. So for, for expression, operation, and equation, uh, we will teach our students on how to find the value of an expression or a formula given values of the variable. Then we Teach them how to simplify algebraic expressions involving sums, product, powers, compare expression to determine if they are equivalent. Okay, we have also write expression, equation, or inequalities to represent problem situations. Solve linear equation, linear inequalities, simultaneously linear equations in two variables, including those that model real life situations. And I think 
we are doing this one in our grade 8. Kasi yung ibang topic dito, na-encounter na natin in grade 7. For relationship and functions, we have there, interpret, relate, and generate representations of linear functions in tables, graphs, or words. Identify properties of linear functions, including the slope and the intercepts, the X and Y intercept. So, number two, we must teach. Uh, we must teach them, no, to interpret, relate, and generate representations of simple nonlinear functions. Okay, nonlinear functions. Example nito yung mga quadratic, no, or the the cubic na mga equations or functions or polynomials in tables, graph, or words, generalized pattern relationships in sequence using numbers, words, and algebraic expression. For our samples for algebra, we have there uh, for applying ayan, the stopping distance in terms of meters depend on the speed per second of the car when the brakes are applied. A formula for cal for calculating this distance is equal to distance equals two times the speed plus the the speed squared all over twenty. What is the stopping distance when the speed is equal to twenty meters per second? Okay. Next we have. Applying also the perimeter of a triangle ABC is 21 centimeters. But this time, we try to re relate no, the, the triangle with its length in terms of algebra. We have 2x plus 5, 3x plus 1, and x. So what is the value of x? Another example for algebra, we have uh, for, ano na, okay, yun lang pala, tatlo lang dapat. Okay? So right now, we have we are now on the geometry na area, content domain. So the geometry content domain, meron siyang one topic only, which is the geometric, uh, geometric shapes and measurement, which composed of 20% of the total items. Okay? So for geometric shapes and measurement, identify and draw types of angles and pairs of lines and use the relationship between angles on lines and in geometric figures to solve problems, including those involving the measures of angles and line segment. We we will also teach them how to solve problems involving points in the Cartesian plane. Okay. Then identify two-dimensional shape. Use their geometric properties to solve problems, including those involving perimeters, circumference, area, and the Pythagorean theorem. And lastly, for geometric shape. Recognize and draw images of geometric transformations. Translation, reflection, and its rotation in the plane. Identify congruent and similar triangles and rectangles and solve related problems. Meron pa palang isa. Identify three-dimensional shapes and use their geometric properties to solve problems including those involving surface area and volume. And then relate these tri uh, three-dimensional shapes. Okay. So... Next, ito. This will be our our third. Okay? Okay, for geometry. Okay, mga samples for geometry. Ano nangyayari dito? Okay, content domain, geometry, and cognitive domain. Reasoning. Okay, we have Sue and Ben have ident identical rectangular pieces of paper. They use different way to, ro to roll their papers into cylinders so that opposite sides of the paper touch as shown below. Then compare the properties of the two cylinder. Use the drop down menu. So again, this is from the electronic na area on Teams implementation. Okay, next we have the last no, content domain on the grade 8 mathematics and this is all about the data and probability uh, which has two topics areas. 
data 50% and probability is 5%. So for data, we must, uh, we must teach them how to read and interpret data from one or more sources to solve problems, interpolate and extrapolate, makes com uh, make comparisons and draw conclusions. Number two, identify appropriate procedures for collecting data, organize and represent data to help answer questions, and then calculate, use, or interpret statistics. Okay, uh, for statistics, we are focusing on the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. So summarizing the data distribution, recognize the effect of the spread and the outliers. And for the probability, we have simple and compound events. So we must determine theoretically the probability based on equally likely outcomes. Uh, example, yung ruling a die. Uh, Estimate and the estimate the empirical probability based on the experimental outcomes. And for our sample problems, we have here okay, applying, identify an appropriate graph for three different types of data. Okay. Lee wants to make three graphs to show information about his town. The title of his graph are shown in the table. So which type of graph is best for each? drag one type of graph of each title. So we have titles, job types of workers in town, the number of girls and boys born in each year, then town population over time. Okay, another example applying also, uh, estimate the number of objects in a given probability. So we have there, a bag contains of marble, some white and some black. So a marble is chosen at random, its color is noted, and the marble is placed back into the bag. Into the bag. This is done 120 times. And a white marble appears 70 times. So how many white marbles are likely to be in the bag? Okay. okay another sample for data and probability you have there. Uh, find and compares. The unit prices of four objects. We have sales store Q, sales store S, sales store R, and sales store T. So you has Chen has seen this advertisement for socks and wants to pay the lowest price per pair of socks. Complete the table below to show Chen the price per pair of socks in each store. Store Q has been done for you. Okay, ayan. So, another example on the data and probability. Ayan, applying siya. A relay team for 400 meter race has four runners. They took 12 seconds and 30 seconds. 11 seconds and 13 seconds respectively to complete their leg. So, in the next race, two of the runners each improved their times by two seconds. And the other two had the same times as before. By how many seconds did the team mean means mean running time improve? Okay. So those are the content domain. This time we will proceed on the cognitive domain. Now for cognitive domain, as mentioned kanina, meron tayong dalawa, uh, tatlo, rather, knowing, applying, and reasoning. For knowing, we have 40% for grade, uh, grade 4 math, 35% for grade 8 math, and applying, we have 40% for grade 4 math, 40% for grade 8 math. Reasoning, we have 20% for grade 4 math, 25% for grade 8 math. So when we talk about knowing, it covers the facts, the concept, and procedures students need to know. Applying, focus on the ability of students to apply knowledge and conceptual understanding to solve problem or answer questions. And then reasoning, it goes beyond the solution routine or uh, routine problems to encompass unfamiliar situations. Okay. So, here are the following uh, maybe instructional objective no, on a particular cognitive domain. So, under the knowing, we have to make mga recall, okay, Recog recognize, Classify, order, 
compute, retrieve, and measure. If you try to observe, okay, the knowing part, meron siyang computation and measurement already. Okay? Unlike before, where we have our knowledge na part, uh, more on ano tayo, more on uh, identification on the terms and the formulas. While on applying, okay, applying we have to determine, represent model, and implement model. So when we talk about implement, it involves strategies and operation to solve problems. Okay. We have also reasoning. For reasoning, we have analyze, integrate, synthesize, evaluate, draw conclusions, generalize, justify, and uh, ayun, and justify. Now, for cognitive domain, okay, in our session three, okay, pa, we will try to depend no on the different uh, instructional objective, okay. Because at that time, we will try to create a discovery method on how teams was made or how teams questions will be made so that we could reflect and we could analyze and maybe in the end, we can develop our own uh, questions for our assessment in the student's learning. Now, aside from the content and the cognitive domain, baka magtataka kayo since we are talking with framework of teams, paano ba siya ang implementation ng assessment or the testing procedure on the team's assessment? So, in the team's assessment, since we are using sampling, no? Okay. Hindi lang lahat ng achievement, baka magtataka kayo, uh, in one of the, the, the release, no? Uh, test questions released by teams for grade 4 mathematics, meron tayong 73 questions no, for achievement tests. And then, there are 80 plus, 80 plus for grade 8. And then, matanong natin siguro sa, sa mga sarili natin, paano ba yan ipapa, ipapasagot sa mga bata? That's 60 or 70 plus na items for grade format, nakakaano naman yun, nakakapagod, nakakastress na mga bata. But you know what? Lahat ng mga questions na yun, hindi lahat ibibigay sa isang bata. They are making samples, no? So, the teams are making booklet design in giving the student achievement. Meron silang booklet from 1 up to 14. And if you try to observe, uh, per, per booklet, it contain the, the mathematics and the science na area. So, meron tayong MO1, MO2, that is referring to the math part 1, ma, math part 2, science part 1, science part 2. Pero, meron din tayong math part 3. Kumbaga, yung mga, yung mga achievement na questions, they, they try to, to, ano no, to divide into 13, uh, 14 yata, to 14. 14 parts, and then every part binibigay nila. So, ganito yung pagkakaano, no, para mas makita natin yung sampling procedure, kasi the teams are using the multiple matrix sampling. So, they are using mga random assignment and systematic assignment. So, if you try to observe, hindi lahat, say for example, this is 20 items, no, na questions, and then there are 24 at uh, 22 uh, 24 dapat ito na puto lang na mga students or learners and then if you try to observe hindi lahat ng test questions sasagutan ng iisang bata so some of some of the questions are answered by how many students by out of 22 maybe 5 or maybe 10 kay pinakamarami na siguro yung 10 so hindi lahat ng achievement na questions sasagutin uh, sasagutin nila okay certain part lang sa achievement no para magkakaroon talaga ng sampling and for the testing time okay meron lang tayong part 1 sa booklet 36 minutes and then part 2 is 36 minutes also and then aside the achievement 
uh, booklet 1, part 1, and part 2 focus on the achievement level. Then another questionnaire for uh, student questionnaire, more on mga questions na kung paano ba, how, how did the teacher teach the subject in the classroom, mga ganun na mga parang interview sa style. We have also 30 minutes. But in between the, the, the test, merong mga break para hindi mapagod yung bata. Okay. So, this time, yun po yung mga ano no, yung uh, framework na ginawa ng teams on conducting our international assessment for mathematics and science. Uh, ngayon naman, uh, makikita ninyo meron tayong online quiz. Okay? And I will share a link. That link will be answered. Okay? Request ko sa inyo. Sagutin nyo po yan. And you can answer that one within siguro ang mga sa, sa ating lunch break, no? So, wag na ngayon. Mamaya after sa lunch ninyo, uh, mas maganda, no? Masagot nyo yan before magkakaroon tayo ng session 3. And session 3 will start siguro mga 1.30, no? At 1.30. So, pero before session 3, meron pa tayong mga preliminary. So, we will be back at 1 o'clock. So, I hope with that time span, a uh, time check, anong oras na ba ngayon? 11.40, okay? 11.40. So, I will stop here muna for session 2 and then I will leave you the online quiz. Sample yun. Ang lalabas dyan, mga sample ng problem. And that is for grade 4 mathematics. Okay? Uh, may I request our moderate uh, our facilitator to to uh, know the screen for our for the link okay yan po the teams test link forms that glee mtls pcn 33nq wx uh, w3x hx j76 now makikita nyo po yan sa comment section para i-click nyo na lang yun. Okay? Kasi mataas po yung pagkakaano, no? We try to shorten this one, pero yan na po yung pinaka-shorten that because that is a Google form. Okay? So, sige po. Uh, thank you for lending your ears and thank you for attending, no? Our second session. Uh, let's go back to our, ano? To our Master of Ceremony, our hosts. Teacher Bessie and Teacher Joseph. Okay, thank you sa inyong dalawa. And that's end of our session, session two. Thank you so much, Teacher Michael. Yan, for being very detailed and, and at the same time specific in your second session. And hopefully, our all our teacher innovators will be um, checking in with our online quiz later on during our lunch break because we shall again see Teacher Michael this afternoon. And of course, thank you also to our teacher innovators for being with us this morning and we shall now be taking our lunch break. And of course, congratulations for finishing the first two sessions and more sessions are to follow this afternoon teacher bessie we shall also be continuing our training session this afternoon at exactly one o'clock however our attendance link for the pm session or the afternoon session shall be opened at 12 30 p.m again our attendance link for the p.m session shall be opened at 12 30 p.m and we shall be awarding um the implementers of project watch for both the morning and afternoon session which shall be given to the teachers who have filled out our attendance link first hand so abang abang sa ating watch awardees kaninang morning session and now let us take our um lunch and don't forget to refresh 
not only your minds, but both your minds and your bodies in order to learn more in the afternoon session. We will still be streamed live on our platforms, Teacher Bessie, our Facebook page, Davao de Oro, Math Circle of Innovators, our Facebook private group, DDO Mathematics Hub for Active Learning, and of course, through our YouTube channel at DDO um, MEP TV. And don't forget to subscribe para ma-notify po kayo just in case the, that that YouTube channel will be uh, magla live po. So you will get notified po. Yes, and also please utilize the three platforms, the comment boxes, for you to drop your questions, your suggestions, your shout outs. And if we will be having lots of time later, we will be reading them one by one. And our official hashtag for this training shall be hashtag DDOMEP2021. You know what, Teacher Bessie, may nakita na akong co-teachers ko na, na nag, nagpo-post na sa Facebook and using our hashtag. So again, that is hashtag DDOMEP2021. You may post your pictures, screenshots, and or our your daily outputs. Kasi may outputs tayo. And while being virtually present in our training. Again, using our official hashtag, um, hashtag DDOMEP2021. Flash on your screen. Yes, and reminders to our teacher participants, our teacher innovators, that in order to complete this training and to acquire your certificates of participation, attendance, and all others, so you are to accomplish the attendance, the pretest link, the expected outputs, and the evaluation. Links of the following shall be provided to you time to time and also please don't forget our online um quiz uh, please take note to look at your group chats from your district math coordinators to have the automatic link for you to accomplish in your google sheets and of course we would like to inform our participants that we will be sharing our slides of the presentation using a link po that will be posted mamayang hapon so again uh, the slides of the presentation po kanina uh, will be provided using a link po na ipopost namin mamaya so on that note teacher bessie let us take our breaks and enjoy our lunch and see you all back this afternoon at 1 o'clock. See you later. Stay safe, Matt Innovators.